Good morning, class, and welcome back to the Nerd Academy podcast, your source for nerddom news and commentary. I am your host, Jared Bachman Stubbs, and Travis and Lexi are off today. Uh, they're celebrating Valentine's Day today on Monday the 15th. But fret not, I am not alone, not by any stretch of the imagination. I am joined by Armin and Mitch from the comic book cast. Yo. It is time for rock and roll. <laughs> oh, somebody give me a drum beat before the haters come in. <laughs> hey, it's what they. I know that is. <laughs> oh man, it, this is gonna be good. I mean, who the hell celebrates Valentine's Day? I had my wife make me a bunch of that. cupcakes, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna eat these and go play video games. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, I had a Monday. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, for in his defense, Mondays are like one of Travis's only days off. Ah, that makes sense. And that makes sense. It was funny because he kept for he kept forgetting to tell me. He was like, hey, we might have to finagle Nerd Academy this week because Lexi and I are trying to do Valentine's on Monday. And he kept forgetting to tell me. And then I like official, officially nailed down a uh, recording with you guys. Because fun fact, Armin and Mitch were supposed to be on last week. But me being a dumbass agreed to stream with Girls with Sabres right before we recorded Nerd Academy. <laughs> and also uh, went on Around the Galaxy with Pete Fletzer right after Nerd Academy. Jesus. It occurred to me that I had triple booked us. Lexi was also going to be on Girls with Sabres stream. So we're all, the whole schedule is like coming through our ears because I'm an idiot and bad at my job. And the point was, I'm like, okay, like trying to map it out. I get the DM from Mitch going, hey, are we still on for today? And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, I haven't heard from him. I should just message him quick. And he's just like, Cool. My evening's free. Yeah. yeah, you you made the right decision because I I totally would have made an ass out of myself at the very <laughs> last moment. Um, so it was like, okay, we got to do it next week. We got it ironed out. And I text Travis. I was like, hey, good news. We have some of the comic book guest guys on Nerd Academy this week. He's like, oh, cool. That's great. If that's the case, Lexi and I are going to be on. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, this <laughs> perfectly for everyone. It all worked out. <laughs> Right, right. It was it was a gift from the podcasting gods that I triple booked us last week. Oh, <laughs> like a dumbass. But hey, anybody who's been around it long enough at this point knows that uh, <laughs> knows to expect nothing less from me. Uh, but that kind of uh, fuckery, uh, as the title of the stream would indicate. <laughs> but jumping in here, we're gonna we're getting to some of the news. We're going to start chronologically with how we got the news. We're not going to talk about the trailer up top. I I, I, I just want to talk about the Joker for a little bit. Oh. So, no. Oh. 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 We're, oh, no. we're, we're just, oh. just talking oh. talk about society. <laughs> um, so we got our first look at Jared Leto's look for the Snyder Cut. Uh, was that on Tuesday? This happened on Tuesday, I think. All of it blurs together. I think it was Tuesday, but yeah. Interview with Vanity Fair. We got our first look at him uh, because it is Mr. Snyder. The pictures are in black and white um, because, you know, that's what you do for one of the most colorful characters in all of comic books. You do the picture in black and white. Uh, I mean, I'm going to kick to you first. How, how, how do you feel about the new look? Um, so I've always had a weird stance on Geraletto's Juggalo Joker. Not that <laughs> it's not that Juggalo I hated him. Yeah, yeah, juggalo. Like, <laughs> it's not that I hated it. I understand what they were going for. I just did not like the execution. The idea they had about him being this modern day like a pimp who's like all tricked out with gold and stuff. It fits a, it fits a certain feel that they were going for, and I can appreciate that. I thought the execution was garbage. So going to Snyder's, I expected the worst. And that reveal was like, well, you know what? He's sort of ignoring what came before and he's doing his own thing. And it's kind of warmed up on me that it's going to be another interpretation of Joker. That's not like the previous Leto incarnation we saw. So until I see like a, um, I don't know, until I guess see the final product, I'm open to it. Cause I always like interpretations of Joker, you know, like, cause it's one of like the most iconic characters and nobody truly owns that character. So I'm willing to give Leto another shot, but that reveal to me just fell sort of flat. It was like, Oh, it's black and white. Well, 
what color does his hair snyder like uh, like it's like the new gods you reveal the new gods but they're black and white in the color shots like it, it, i don't know if the reveal felt a little off but i i'm open to seeing what Jared Leto has to offer like i don't have anything against his joker in particular at least this version because we haven't really seen much so i guess that's sort of my take on that one yeah that that that's fair i i i know i'm the odd man out here and i'm gonna end up defending jared leto's joker uh completely uh but because i i'm i'm a contrarian by nature and can't help but love it but mitch your your thoughts on on the reveal just the look itself um uh, i agree with everything i'm being said apart from i hate it <laughs> <laughs> pretty short and sweet um no Perfect. i I don't like Jared Leto at all. I don't think he's that great of an actor. He's a mm, other stuff that I probably shouldn't bring up because the mm. internet might um, pop a pop a fuse on that one. But <laughs> uh, no, it's I don't. I'm. It's, he's in a different set and he's in a different context. I'll give him a different shot. I'm not expecting anything because it is Jared Leto and it is his Joker and yeah. it's Snyder. It's like a recipe for something I know I'm not going to like. <laughs> it's literally as simple as that. No. Oh. <laughs> I <laughs> see. I got, I, I got, I've gotten to a point with like a lot of the Snyder stuff where I, I enjoy the discourse of just kind of opening Twitter or opening Facebook and like seeing a lot of people who I share the same sentiment with, with a lot of Snyder's work going, just a collective what the shit am I looking at right now? Um, and the way that everybody kind of has that shared moment of what the hell is this? So there's a part of me that gets excited when I'm like, oh, Jared Leto's Joker is in the Snyder Cut. Say more. Um, we're like, but you said, Mitch, it's just this recipe for disaster where I'm like, it's just a recipe for me to just be thoroughly entertained <laughs> um by the conversation that happens there armin i also agree with you uh i did I, I i agree with you on the whole i like what they were going for with like gangbanger soundcloud joker <laughs> right where or, you know like he's iced out he's got the grill it's like you know the tats and everything um i did like the face tattoos i don't like damaged I think, yeah. I, I really think if you take that that one tattoo away, I think a lot of people would have been on board with it. I think a lot more people would have been cool with it if you just got rid of damaged. I mean, it's a slight improvement. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Very I, slow. I, I, I like what they were going for. Um, as far as costuming goes with Suicide Squad, that's where I kind of start to fall off. Where like. I don't like that most of the movie he was wearing sweatpants. I, I'll you know, be honest. I don't even remember what he was wearing because I try to just like forget that movie. It's so, literally like, juggers and that purple trench coat and that's it. Oh, yeah. Most of the movie, like when he shows up to save Harley at Midway, he's in like a tuxedo and the club scene. He's also in a suit, but the suit wasn't purple. So <laughs> it was just like, like, like just have him wear what the Joker wears. This is a very easy character look to pull off. It's a purple suit. Um, that said, I am curious as to what is going on, uh, as to why he kind of has this thing going on where it's Heath Ledger meets Joaquin meets The Crow. Yeah. Is, and maybe The Crow thing is because it's black and white and you can't see the green. But like him looking all disheveled and whatnot, like is what kind of gives it the crow look. Uh, I feel like Joaquin's Joker kind of like really put the nail in the coffin for Joker with long hair. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. At, at least for me, and that's where I get that the the Joaquin vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, you got like the messy mouth that's very Ledger. Um, granted, from like the very brief bit we see of him, it, it does seem like they're still going with the comic book thing and what that was in Suicide Squad that presumably his skin is just white. Like he's not wearing makeup. His skin got bleached, which I like. I like that. I, I think it's weird that 
the Joker aesthetically is this character who we get such weird interpretations of when he's so simple to make happen. Yeah, it's like again, uh, there's a couple things I, I really do like about it, but I just think like how much can he actually do in the limited amount of time you know he's going to be given? Because like it's like five six minutes of additional new footage, right? That's not a whole lot to convince me that you know like this new look is going to deliver something tremendous. I could be wrong. They could literally like be like, no, this is what you wanted, and it's going to be like the greatest thing ever. But I'm also like, eh. Like you, you really gonna have to show me something special here, right? Like that's sort of my takeaway at it. Like it, this better be some something that blows me the hell away. Like that's kind of how I look at it. No, that's fair. And I, I again, like you were saying, like five or six minutes of like new footage on top of stuff we haven't seen. That was just a part of the Snyder cut. Always, you know. I and this this kind of bleeds in the trailer talk a little bit. I want to see how he becomes involved. Mm. Like there's a part of me that feels like there has to be a time skip. <sighs> well, it's a nightmare scene, isn't it? I think so, but it looks like there's a lot of that. footage from the nightmare scene. Like mm. it looks like it's more than just because originally it wasn't like the nightmare sequence supposed to be only like a brief blip into the future. But the more footage we see, it's like, dude, the entire like league is here. Like it's, so I don't yeah, know. I noticed today that Cyborg is like in the background of uh, the society scene. Mm -hmm. I want to pull something up because Travis the other day uh, in like the little Nerd Academy group chat hit the nail on the head, and I think he, I think he's right with this. Um, he said th th he really didn't care for the trailer, um, but he said, "I but I think I figured out the plot <laughs> and how it's different and." He said, so the front is going to be most of the stuff we haven't seen before and setting up apocalypse and all of that stuff. And then the middle is going to be the timeline where they don't revive Superman and it's Bruce's vision from BVS. And at the end, he sends Barry back in time to change things and rewind them, uh, reviving Superman and winning a fight with Steppenwolf. Uh, but during the nightmare timeline... Uh, Superman was resurrected by Steppenwolf and Darkseid. You know, oh, that's honestly great because there was all that talk that Snyder liked all those videos and posts about mm -hmm. how the Russos ripped off this cut of the film that didn't uh -huh. exist. So <laughs> if you actually connect the dots, that honestly seems like that's probably it. Because they now just take sense. Endgame and make it black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, End game, but like Tony slaps Morgan in the face during the "I Love You" three thousand scene. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah, <laughs> cinema. I'll sell your toys. Uh, <laughs> so, but I, th I think Travis is right. Yeah, and I, 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 I am really inclined to agree with him. And I like that direction as well. I like the idea that like maybe there is a time skip, which again the. Snyder cut end game conversation is going to be really entertaining if that is the case. But I mean, it's always funny because you know, BVS was essentially like Iron Man 3 in Age of Ultron, no. yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it is very similar. And that was a thing that I see people all the time like doing the whole like, oh, it's clearly a ripoff, this is clearly a ripoff of that. It's like all of these stories, all of these characters have been around for so long. You'd be hard pressed to not point out storylines that are hilariously similar. Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. Definitely. Oh, they went back in time to stop the apocalypse. Everybody has gone back in time to stop something. Yeah. Uh, Everybody gets into some weird time traveling shenanigans. So the idea that there's a time skip and that, like whoever's left of the league and of humanity yeah. is running some type of resistance and they, they need all the people they can get their hands on. So maybe this resistance is made up of like nightmare, Batman cyborg. Clearly they need flash to go back and mess with right. the timeline. Mm. Which I, I guess now that scene kind of makes sense where we see Flash and there's all the ripples. It looks like time is actually like bending and fixing itself around him. That kind yeah. of actually might make sense. Yeah. That's the most then, colorful the, shot in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
and if and if this is the case and they need everybody they can get their hands on, that might be where Joker and Deathstroke come into play. Mm, yeah. Is, is Deathstroke first- in this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Joe Manganiello went in for reshoots as well. Ah, who, okay. who doesn't love Joe Mench? <laughs> I don't know what his last name is. I can never pronounce it. Who doesn't Flash love Thompson. him? Flash Thompson. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think he might be right, and I hope he's right, because that sounds really interesting to me. Granted, I'm a Marvel tard who loves Endgame. but True, true. Yeah, we're all Marvel tards here. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing. I, I do want to kind of come in here. It's like Batman v Superman, if you lay out that movie, that sounds incredible, ambitious, and something that I would be all over. But the execution is what ruins us. So it's like, I love everything I hear about the Snyder Cut and what it's going to deliver. But again, you can mess up simplicity, right? Like, we've seen bad directors mess up really good ideas. So it's like, eh, it's, I, I just need to see what this thing is and finally, like, just to live with the fact that it's like, okay, look, they let it happen. They threw a bunch of money at it. Hopefully it's good. And th- that's that, you know, like. Mm. I, I just can't get past the fact that it's got to be the same movie. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've seen this trailer literally confirms, at least to me, that I have seen this before. There's a few new things in there, like the apocalypse stuff and the nightmare scene is going to be extended. But we, we that's the basic structure of the movie is what we've already seen. Yeah. Like, can they really deviate too much from that? I'm not entirely sure. If it if they do and it's completely different, I'll hold my hands up and eat the crow. But I'm fully expecting it just to be exactly what we've seen, but grey and orange. Yeah. <laughs> to do something that I don't I, I that's a lie. I, I do play devil's advocate for Zack Snyder a lot. Um, because I, his, I'm, I'm the only person I know who like really enjoys BVS despite its flaws. Um, but I always, anytime I say that, I say it with that caveat. Cause I know, like I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do think there is merit to the idea that even though on a, like on a flat line, point A to point B, to a whole lot of other le- uh, letters because four hour runtime, it might storyline be the same, but tonally that it is a different movie. Mm-hmm. And I will give that ground of maybe the biggest difference here is tone. No, I'd agree with that. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I will, I will, because I've been thinking the same thing where I'm like, this kind of feels like the same movie. Mm. It's like we have but, Steppenwolf attacking the Amazonians. We've seen that before. He looked sidestep as bad. <laughs> like nothing's really an improvement or worse in these two versions. And you know, they have to resurrect Superman somehow. We know they do it because that shot where he's looking pissed as all hell has got Wonder Woman Aquaman behind him. Mm -hmm. So we know that third act's got to be like that. And we've seen, you know, them stepping out of the bat crawl or whatever the hell that weird toy was called. Yeah. They're like, there's a lot of similarities to the plot in this night. I mean, I'm I'm hoping it's different for the sake of my time. Yeah. For the most part, but I'm not expecting anything different. It's a thing where if you're like into Zack Snyder stuff, you will love this because it's his thing. Yeah. It's sort of like me and Guillermo del Toro. I know that I love his stuff and the weirder it gets, the more I'm going to love it because he has that style that I love. Even if it's like a bad movie, like that one with the Loki and the red house and rogue was in, it. I can't even remember it. Something oh. Rose. I don't even remember, but like, I love the movie. I was like, this is great, but it's the visuals for, it. I didn't go into it, you know, for whatever the hell else. So mm. I, again, I, Snyder has a unique style and a unique approach and I can appreciate it. I get why his fans love it, but I think I've just come to realize that it's not for me, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's just not for me. I, I kind of settled into what I like and what I like is being a Marvel tard. So <laughs> the movie you were looking for, I mean, which crimson some, red or something you're you're close crimson peak that's <laughs> it oh, i couldn't remember that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i haven't seen it in about a year but it, uh, yeah i really enjoyed it yeah no and i i agree with you and i think that there is there are things 
you know, I've said before, I love Batman v Superman because I know that is the closest I'm ever going to get to a Dark Knight Returns. Mm. I'd it. hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well they do have the bat tank in it so uh, yeah that's true, that's true you know i i that getting that vibe of bruce coming out of retirement because if with the clear implication that it is because he is addicted to being batman and that you know i, I also think that with the dark knight returns one of the most important things is that, like this is one of the worst outcomes for bruce mm. Like when you look at like the potential timelines of DC and what could or could not happen, I think towards the bottom is the Dark Knight Returns because it ends with him alone with nobody and just this addiction to the Batman. Mm -hmm. And I like seeing that and I like seeing the Superman fight because, again, I know I'm part of the problem but I love because he's Batman type bullshit and that whole, you know, yeah, he beat the piss out of Superman. Why you ask? Because he's the Batman. I enjoy wow. that. And I enjoyed getting to see it in live action. And I think Ben Affleck offers like a really, really compelling. So, so you're enable, you're the reason you enable Frank Miller to have his work on the screen. Okay. Listen, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm not proud of it. But, <laughs> all of that said, the fact that that is also followed up with Bruce can't stop killing. Um, we don't. It's implied now, I guess, that Dick Grayson's the dead Robin. Oh yeah, no, it's not at right confirmed now. I think. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's all the killing. There's Superman, who's like weirdly emo about it. There's all of these things that like bring the whole movie down for me, but like Ben Affleck's performance, seeing the Batman and Superman fight, getting that vibe of the Batman that just can't quit being this. That's what really makes me like it. Mm. And like that glimmer of hope at the end where he's like, I got to do better. We all have to do better where you can like, okay, this, like this is the Batman that I actually love to see that at my core makes me happy that see i just hope it's executed to your liking because we know again going back to batman v superman you know they said things you're like okay i like what you're saying here and then i saw the end product i was like you did the opposite of what you said god damn it like <laughs> you know so it's like eh, we'll see i guess i guess i'm excited i just want to watch it get it over with and move on to shazam 2 personally that, that's what i want <laughs> what about shizadam god damn it <laughs> i forgot to put that in the notes <laughs> and you said it that's all we had to say that's yeah. all leave it right there or we just leave it right there uh all right moving along here another quickie story so um Here's another thing that both of you have made fun of me for, aside from the Snyder stuff. Uh, I don't have a PlayStation, so <laughs> or I, I, I play my brother sometimes. But, Boy, uh, I've not I've not had the opportunity to play The Last of Us. I am familiar with the story though, and I do like I like what I do know about it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the uh, HBO adaptation of The Last of Us has its Joel and Ellie in Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. So I am going to shut up and give the floor to the two people who have actually played the game. Well, I played the first one once, and I've yet to play the second one. It's on my list. I have not got around to it yet. Okay. But personally, like, would I have gone for these two myself? I don't know. Yeah. It, it very much feels like they've gone for Pascal because it's like, hey, you played a surrogate father in this really big streaming show. Let's yep. get him to do that one. But... I'm not going to complain that he's Joel. I'm really excited to watch it. And that's where I stand. Oh, God. Um, so the last of us for me is something that I, I was there right early when I announced that Uncharted is my favorite game franchise, I would say probably ever. So it was Naughty Dog. I was like, okay, I'm ready for this next thing. So I'm one of the people that owns the limited 450 ever made like statue of him and Ellie. Like I own a bunch of limited things like press only and things like that. So like I'm deep into wow. this world and those characters. Um, And I've 
played the first one probably about three or four times. Um, the second one twice. I love the second one. I love the direction they took it in. I know that's unpopular to say on the internet because of people fundamentally missing the point of the first game and thinking that Joel is like a father figure. And knowing that and how the second one goes, this casting, I think, is going to be tremendous because if they follow the show, if the show follows the game, I mean, which is what they're saying they will, people will love Joel and Pedro Pascal. Mm -hmm. Like Mando, people will fall in love with that character. But when the show lays in the foundation of who he is and as that starts to unravel and they get to season two, which I assume they will. And if we get as far as they did in the games, when things go the other way, people are really going to need to, like in the video game, reflect on what they see in humanity and, and who is a good person. And I think he is going to kill it as that, you know, like I think him oh, as yeah, Joel yeah. is like, you could, if you could have asked me who's perfect for Joel, I couldn't tell you, but now knowing I'm like, yeah, no, that, that is a perfect casting for Ellie. I've only seen that girl in game of Thrones. Same, she had an yeah. attitude in there. She swore. I can see what they're going for. Cause she has that look and that ability as well. So this is, um, seeing how like HBO has handled like Chernobyl and all their other originals. I have nothing but the most hype and like anticipation for this show. It's probably jumped probably in my like, top three anticipated things over the next couple of years. So mm. I, I am ready. Like it's, I I'm all in. <laughs> say, like, my biggest, not, it's not even a problem or issue. It's just the, how it feels. Cause when this thing was a movie, mm. they originally had Maisie Williams on for Ellie. Yeah. And it feels like since it's okay, you know, I'm glad the, I didn't hallucinate that. Yeah, no, she she I was, was definitely definitely attached. Glad I hallucinated that when the story broke. I was like, did I just make that up? No, did I fan cast no. <laughs> experience the story of directly? Like and like yeah. Maisie Williams is an unfortunate one. It's like, of course you go for the little girl in Game of Thrones. Like, why wouldn't you go for it? At the same time, it's like, no, she'd have absolutely nailed the hell out of that role. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. now she's maybe slightly too older for that. I reckon she could still put it off because she still looks 12 yeah <laughs> despite being in her 20s but um it feels like they just gone for right we can't get that which one was younger than her in the show cool we'll get her mm -hmm. but because I, I can't remember her character in the game of thrones whatsoever uh, she she just had a lot of attitude and she was like the youngest of the kings of yeah. like you know west rose like and that's so what i, I liked yeah. i can remember her mouthing off a little bit and that's about uh -huh. it. and it's like yep. cool I, I suppose that's kind of early in a way but yeah <laughs> is this the girl that like, like again, like you, like you said, like one, like one of the younger kings. She's one of the ones that gets turned into a White Walker, right? Um, past can't remember. I don't okay. remember past. Yeah, I don't remember. I okay. I maybe I'm wrong, and somebody in the comments will tell me I'm a dipshit. Say I, I left the hell out of that show. Completely forgot half of it. Yeah. Yup. Now, Mitch, are you familiar with? I'm assuming you know how what what happens in The Last of Us too. Uh, uh, despite asked, playing it, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, despite not okay. playing it, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, so before I asked Armin for like being very specific, I want to make sure I wasn't accidentally spoiling and you somehow avoided all of it. Do you think that potentially by doing this as a show, they're opening the door for people to come to terms with the decisions that were made creatively with Last of Us Part Two? Because personally i think that there might be one of the reasons for the oh well, joel's the hero obviously mentality that created that discourse and created that frustration is that he is the player character yeah 100% yep yep 100% and that there is like a well my actions have to be justified yeah. and you can't not end up in that like I'm going to save this little girl no matter what. Right. As a player that like you are, you, you feel like that mission is bestowed on you. Um, well, it's, it's kind of, it's a unique situation to video games because you, you think of the last of us doesn't really do anything different to every other game out there. So no, you're no. right. The hero, you run around, you shoot people, you, you know, you're the good guy. You are definitely the good guy. You win. The, the last of us holds up that mirror and it's like, are you really? Mm-hmm. Like people obviously miss that because the new when this news broke, I had a conversation with someone. They're like, as long as it happens and he, you know, 
Blaze of Glory. It's just like, did you play the first one? Did you actually pay yeah. attention to it? Because I, I played it once, and that was last year. And even I, I kind of clocked that. Hang on a minute. This guy is not a great well, dude. That's the thing. Like, if you, because obviously having the knowledge of how it ends and then replaying it and playing two and then going back to one, right from the early couple of hours of the first one, dialogue from Joel himself when he talks about everybody is, I don't care about anybody besides myself. I'm a piece of shit. I'm a terrible human. And he keeps nailing that. And yeah, yeah. somehow a lot of people miss that. And through his actions, by the time the game ends, people might have missed the last 30 minutes of that game, apparently, because it's one of the only games where I beat it and I felt disgusted at everything I just did and what the character does at the end. And I'm like, boy, this character, I don't know. And in the second one, when they pick up the trail from there and keep going, and then they do flashbacks and tie the story around, you're like, man. Ooh, did that one places and like they try to really layer it on. So it's like I I congratulate Naughty Dog and Sony on the fact that when they went into Last of Us 2, they knew they would get backlash for dealing with transphobic things and focusing on trans people and having another character to play as and painting the world in a different light. Everybody knew they knew the backlash they would get. And they did not veer at all. And it seems like they're doing the same thing from the show because Druckmann said, I'm at the helm. And as long as I'm at the helm, that's how they produce mm. the show. Without me, they're not doing it. So it's like, I have a feeling that they're going to follow that. And I, I can't wait to see it unfold because there will be a good amount of people that are probably going to feel like, hmm, what do I, kind of like the Iron Man 3 syndrome is how I want to put it where people didn't like one thing and apparently it's the worst MCU movie because, oh, Mandarin, but the subtext of Mandarin and the actual corporate and how they were framing the Middle East is the depth. So it's like mm. people missed all that just to focus on he didn't have rings and Fu Man shoes. So it's like, that's kind of the last of us to me. So I I'm just, I'm so hyped to see how this turns out. Mm. I just I, hope they I, don't do it where it's like one season, game one, season two, game two. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, make it at least two seasons per game. Mm -hmm. At least. Definitely. I agree with you on that, uh, like spreading out the, 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 the content of the games. And yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think that letting fans take a step back and not have to be the one piloting Joel and the heinous things that he does I I think it will give better context to realizing like these these are his, these are his actions coming up to bite him. You know, this is him having to face in the mirror the fact that when all hell breaks loose and like this post apocalyptic thing, you know, as grim dark as it is, there kind of isn't such a thing as heroes anymore. Mm -hmm. Good guys, it's everybody's doing what they can to survive. And, you know, in a society uh, <laughs> that, you know, doesn't exactly foster take care of your fellow man, you know, like not, not to, uh, not, 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 not to get all, uh, you know, fucking bread tube for a second, but like, I feel like there's something to be said it was like a little really, you know, you got to stretch for it a socioeconomic read of like any post-apocalyptic fiction at all as some type of like critique of late stage capitalism that it's like, yes, our impulse is to immediately all of us turn into monsters. All of us start eating each other. We've all lost all sense of direction. <laughs> kill, 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 consume. Like mm. th there's something there. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to get into that. Yeah. But, <laughs> I just I that's just my impulse on that. But no, I'm really excited for this. I do I do want to play the game really badly. I'm also at the point where I know everything that happens. I also am not particularly good at horror games. Um I like watching them be played. Uh the excuse I always give is that you know when fight or flight kicks in, um I'm fight and I have no control over like what's happening in that situation, like playing the game. Like I, like I cannot fight back. I can just kind of just start screaming and just disrupt <laughs> buddy's day. Cause I don't, I, I don't have the option and I, my brain's still aware of the fact that like, there's no reason to run away from the TV. 
Yeah, as somebody that plays pretty much all survival horror things, like that's probably my favorite genre, I would say, because Resident Evil 2 was like my first exposure to, oh, games can be this, and then kind of like trailed off into that. I wouldn't even really put The Last of Us as a horror or survival no, horror game. Like no. it has those okay. moments, but it's more a game about explore the world and the humans you run into are you know, the humans, they're the bad ones because of this world they've been thrown into. The monsters just sort of get in the way and a lot of scenarios, you can just kind of sneak around them, throw a brick and go the opposite direction. So like, it's it's not too much survival horror. They'll put you in a situation maybe three times in the two games where, okay, this is kind of a survival horror thing, but it doesn't last more than I would say five minutes. So it, it's more about that story-driven Hey, check out this cool thing. It's like set pieces and, you know, it, it, it's a single player narrative driven game that ha happens to be set in a mm. horror world. That's not really horror. So like, I'm going to say it's, it's an interesting how they do the horror because it's the situation combined with the fact that they do not give you bullets for crap. No, Yeah. They're like, here's an abundance of bricks. You have three shots. I, These things die in four. What are you going to do? It's just like, oh, I guess I've got to throw a brick. And, uh, and that's the thing. Like in the first <laughs> game, the scariest part of like the entire first game to me was not any single encounter with any single clicker or anything, but it was the scene where you're playing as Ellie and a dude is trying to like rape you. And I was like, yeah, oh. yeah, that was messed up. Yeah, dude, That yeah, scared yeah. me more than anything. And like, I know it's a good survival. It's not really a good survival horror game because my wife could play it and she gets screamish. So she sat through and played them. I was like, okay, if you can handle it, you, pretty much anybody I think can mm. at this point. Like, it, it's the story it's that like, gets you. It, it leans into it when it has to lean into it, just to remind you of what the situation of this planet is in right yep. now. But then, apart from that, it's like, no, you're on a nice little road trip. Well, yeah. I say no, quotes. No, it's no. <laughs> loose. I can use the word nice. But. <laughs> I mean, in the second game, I think I might have spent at least 20 hours positioning a perfect shot just to take a picture of the beauty of the world and like how the vegetation has taken over and like i have some shots that literally look like they're like real life shots of seattle like it just it looks real yeah. like, again you know the beauty is in the horror as well like you'll run into it's like oh burnt corpses oh but check out how that grass is growing through <laughs> that dude's helmet and eyes though let's try to focus a camera on that it's like cool all right i'm in i'm in mm. like it's the beauty of like the post-apocalyptic setting to me. I'm just interested to see how this show and it's HBO. I got for, after Watchmen. I got full faith in anything they do. Yep. But it's it's how they handle that tension, and uh, it's not really a horror, but it's just a really scary situation to be in. Yeah. With that, all the clickers and everything. Uh, how would you handle that? Because obviously, it's the, that game to live action translation that hinders a lot of games to movies. Because like you, you're missing that experience of playing it yourself, like watching the story unfold. So how is that going to work for TV? But mm -hmm. I got faith. We'll just see how they do it. Yeah. All I know is I'm not eating tonight after that whole grass growing through the guy's eye sockets. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, my my stomach turned in real time. You could not hear just like. The... <laughs> um. We got one last big story here before we get into WandaVision talk, and it is a more serious topic. Um, we've been covering the, uh, the, 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 the accusations against Joss Whedon on Nerd Academy very closely. Um, I know Travis and I have been uh, pretty inclined to believe Ray Fisher. Uh, WB at this point has not made a, has not done a good job at making it seem as though any of that is not feasible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with yeah. A very unfortunate history of not handling shit. And recently charisma carpenter of Buffy and angel fame has come forward with some really, really, really unsettling stuff about Joss Whedon. Uh, include me. It's just all kinds of gaslighting and uh, vicious, vicious, uh, behavior on set um, that Joss got up to on Buffy and Angel. Um, I'm going to read from the NBC News article here. 
Carpenter, Carpenter's accounts of Wheaton's harassment and serialized abuses of power, although those were in quotes, include him accusing her of, quote, sabotaging Angel by getting pregnant and calling her fat to colleagues. For Wheaton, perhaps it all ended with him unceremoniously follow, firing Carpenter from the series after she gave birth, but the actor couldn't move on that easily. Um, here, I, I, I want to talk about this, just that bit there. I've talked a lot before about how um, I was like, God, I was like 11 and 12 when I started watching Angel. Um, long after it had finished its 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 time on air, um, there was a hot minute where uh, my, my uncle lived at home with my family. And there was one time I just kind of came like bebopping into his room just to say, hey, and he was watching Angel. And I was like, oh, hey, what do you watch? And he explained it to me. He's like, you heard of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And I'm like, yeah, I've heard of it. I'm like, you know, hi, I'm 11. Um, I've not watched <laughs> uh, you know, a little before my time, but, you know, it was still ubiquitous in pop culture. So I was familiar with it. I just started watching Angel with him that that day. And then after that, he was like, OK, we're going to go to the beginning of the show. I. I distinctly remember the episode. It was in, I want to say it was, the, yeah, it was the fourth season. Like whenever the, 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 the big Satan apocalypse monster, like massacres the law. Yeah. Firm. Yeah. Yep. Um, which oh, that's, that's, season four is the best one. I don't care what anybody says. All the Angelus stuff is beautiful. Uh, but that's beside the point. And I'm not going to, I'm going to stop praising angel right now. Because I can't not talk about that show and not talk about it. <laughs> I love it, which is not the point anymore. Um, there we go. Can you guys hear me still? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. My headphone came unplugged. Uh, so it's really weird seeing this here because I remember even as a kid watching Angel, getting into it, being weirded out by how weirdly Cordelia just kind of vanishes from the show. Yep. Mm -hmm. and like not being smart enough to put two and two together and go charisma carpenter was probably pregnant in real life yeah i had like at the time i remember i had such a crush on her too so i could really <laughs> stood out to me i was like where the hell did that attractive woman go you know i didn't use those words because i wasn't an adult i was a kid so i used it was more uh the bankers of spankers yeah 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 you know i was using a little <laughs> bit different dialogue to describe her but um it, it was a little shocking and eh, now in retrospect getting this and then seeing all the reports that come out after it yeah yeah and well, it's, it's weird with this one yeah. because we've this this specific story. I want to say we've heard so much over the years mm. that oh, she was like booted from the show because she was pregnant. Because when this dropped, I was like, I swear I've heard that before. Like, I don't know if it's just because it's a common thing in that sort of an industry, or if that bit, like that specific actress has said it before or what and I, I really couldn't place it i remember she talked a little bit about it but it wasn't any accounts like no yeah yeah this, like let's be honest this isn't the first time people have come out against whedon oh, at no. this point it's kind of like no weeding is time for whedon to go yeah like you might have done some of the biggest stuff in this culture thank you but goodbye there's the door mm -hmm. right, yeah. but don't don't come back that that's one thing that we i i, I that has come up on these shows so often when having these conversations about creators who make the things we love, but are just irrehensible fucking monsters in real war in the real world that, you know, you got to put an asterisk next to their name. Yeah. 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 You know, like I've, I've talked before about how, like, I, 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 I can't listen to Michael Jackson music anymore. Like I get sick to my stomach after watching mm -hmm. Neverland or leaving Neverland or whatever it was called. Like I, I get sick to my stomach. I remember a couple summers ago, I tried to watch Joel or try to watch Joel. I tried to show Joel the usual suspects for the first time and got giddy during every scene that I love. And then was immediately brought back by Brian singers, a bastard and Kevin. Oh, Spade. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a double whammy of a movie. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, every time I'm like, God, this movie's so fucking 
you know, like, give me the keys, you fucking cocksucker. I'm like, this is like, this is cinema. This is cinema. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, damn it. They were awful people. Yep. And I just, I, I'm so like, people can separate art from the artist and the people who can and the people who have an easier time living with that asterisk next mm. to somebody's name. Like, I'm glad that they can. <sighs> I that- like, it was only until recently that like being, you know, aware of the world around me as an adult that I'm like, I'm realizing this shit that like Joss Whedon's a monster. Well, like I rem- I remember to t- God, this is like, this is around whenever Suicide Squad came out. I keep wanting to bring up. So here's the fun thing. And we're going to, we're going to break the, we're, we're, we're going to bring the mood up for just a half a second here. You have any idea how hard it is? to have you guys on and try to like reminisce a story I saw back when I was high school and then go, yeah, you were listening to their fucking podcast. Right. <laughs> I was like, That's where you heard it. That's yeah, where yeah. You heard it. Thank you uh, for making me feel older than I already feel. Oh, my back hurts just from that. <laughs> so, oh, I was 11 when I uh, watched Angel. It's kind of like, when did Angel come out? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. no oh, I did not watch it. Last <laughs> I, I, that was on DVD. Um, oh, that, that makes it even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, I remember it was like, oh yeah, Joss Whedon's going to get a Batgirl thing. And I was like, cool. I was like, yep. Buffy. And then I was like, slowly start seeing like, yeah. And then he cheated on his wife and then he did this and then he did this and then he did this and then he did this. I'm like, oh my God, this is a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I was already like going back to watching Angel with that asterisk there. And I was like, yeah, Joss Whedon is like kind of a dick, not a monster. Then the Ray Fisher shit happens. And I was like, wow, this is. Yeah. I mean, uh, this <laughs> I'm sort of with you on the thing. Like there's the whole separation, right? Like the work and stuff. And there is work, you know, I watch by people that I, you know, and they made the thing that I watch that I really like, and it gives me a different outlook on it and the one that stands out to be most and this is something that i didn't realize that i put in the back of my mind but it's probably the reason i didn't finish the game is you all know the borderlands franchise i think right like, i you know what it is loved no, one with, yeah. so borderlands 3 when they announced it at pax east like two years ago or whatever i was there pax invited me they gave me press passes i was staying at like the best hotel right next to the convention and I was covering it. You know, I, I went in there and talked and I remember walking into the lobby and right there was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Randy Pitchford. Randy Pitchford to my right, literally at the hotel. And I'm like, oh shit. And this is right when all those allegations about him were hitting that same weekend mm. about how he was stealing money and doing this and saying nasty things in the USB drive that hit that he had like nude photoshopped photos and disrespecting women and all this. And all that hit as the announcement of the game was coming. And I was like, and I remember that night, you know, the after parties and shit, they get crazy. And I just remember, I won't talk about it too much, but some weird stuff happens and Pitchford was near it. And people were just kind of like, huh, I picked up Borderlands 3. I probably put an hour into it. And it's always been into my mind of all those things that were said and knowing people that work in that industry and specifically that worked close to that project. I never went back to Borderlands 3. I don't think I ever will. And I'm having that effect with Joss Whedon now when it comes to Avengers. Like Shay and I were going to rewatch them going into WandaVision. And we just... Nope, we were going to watch them this past week, and we were both just like, yeah, we don't really want to watch it. So it has kind of ruined that aspect of it for me. You know, it's like, oh, I, and it shouldn't because hundreds, even thousands of people worked on those two Avengers movies, and those people were many of them underpaid. Like some of the suit designers make like $40,000 a year, it barely make $40,000. It's like, that sucks. And they worked on one of the biggest movies of all time. And I can't blame all those people, but he's the guy that was in charge of it. And knowing that he did these things, and I guarantee he probably did it with some of these other movies. And it's Hollywood, unless it it's it does ruin it a lot for me. And that's unfortunate because I I like many people. I love so much of Joss's work. Like Buffy, I remember watching the first episode and recording it on my goddamn VHS so I could rewatch it. So like. 
Uh, it's it's unfortunate. It really is. Just it's disgusting too. All the allegations against them. So mm. I'm a case by case basis with mm. that sort of stuff. Like, funnily enough, I am um, a very easily programmable drone when it comes to the OCU. <laughs> so on, on my, I think it might have been the fifth rewatch of One Division. I think actually it might have been Friday. Actually, every, you know how every time it's oh yeah, here's Age of Ultron. Like or, every or when it, time. Every, it's every time, every single time. Yup. There is something, especially after this week, that is profoundly fucked up about that. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was the the day after the the whole stuff against Whedon came out, and I, I just I kind of just forgot about it. And I put it on. I when, like when the credits came up, I was like, oh yeah, that's a Whedon movie, and I was like, huh. It didn't like. Yes, everything he's done is that absolutely disgusting. But I think at least the Avengers movies for me, I'm not going to have a trouble watching them because they just completely went out of my head that it was Whedon. But full I'm, confession, I'm, I've I'm, never watched Buffy and Angel all the way through. Hmm. I, well, I caught a couple when it was on, never actually went all the way through. And I was thinking because Stars has come to Disney Plus in the UK, Buffy and Angel are on it. I was going to watch it this month when it comes on. And now I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know if I really want to get into that. But, you know, yeah. I, I, and that's where this conversation is really interesting, isn't it? That there are some projects and stories that are, you know, there's one piece of shit attached to it and it becomes hard to watch. For me, Avengers is not affected by that as much because for Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron, it's so much bigger than just Joss Whedon. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Mitch, and Armin as well. Where you like, like you said, like hundreds and thousands of people all work together to make this project, aside from just this one son of a bitch at the top. But also factor in the writers and directors of all the other movies that bring you up to Age of Ultron, and all the performers. Like, there's a lot there that like. Joss Whedon is one cog who directed those movies, which are huge, and they, they, they're fucking Avengers movies. But they don't exist in a vacuum, and that's the point, that they don't yeah, exist yeah. in a vacuum. So, like, and I did the same thing where I forget that Joss Whedon directed and wrote Avengers and, A Avengers and Age of Ultron all the time. So it, it that doesn't occur to me to like you know put that on the pile with Angel. So it is it, it's it's a really fraught conversation. Um, I, I think the most important thing to say here, like with this especially, is the nothing but respect and sympathy for Charisma Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. yeah like no, that, no one should have to go through that, especially at the age she was. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. And I, I w with any time somebody comes forward with anything, I firm, firmly believe that the, the, the most important thing you can do is just thank somebody for finding it in them to stand up and speak up because this shit's scary, especially yeah. in the uh, industry where you're doing it, because had you done this 10 years ago. You're never working again because they cover for each other. But now it's getting a little bit more mainstream where people will back you and there's finally voices. And that's also scary and disgusting because like the Brian Singer scenario, that's been something that's been known for years. And they kept bringing him back for X-Men film. And they knew. They knew over at Fox. And they're just be like, no, nah, bring him back. Bring him back. Bring him back. It's like. Well, it's There's... like Weinstein as well, isn't it? Like, you know, everyone exactly. knows, but it's like this guy has a little bit too much power for someone like Yep. Me. Just, uh, and that's the, that's kind of what just makes me feel bad about it. Again, I will watch the Avengers films. I'll enjoy them because of so much and it's the Marvel thing and so many people contribute, but solo things by him, that's becoming a little harder. Like, yeah, mm. that's, uh, yeah. So I'm going to try and watch Buffy, but I think I'm going to have a problem with it just because I've never seen it before. It, and now it is. The older you get, the more you realize the Whedonisms about women yeah, and all yeah. that. They're everywhere as you watch it when you're older and it's bad. Yeah. It is bad. Well, yeah. I, I shared this into the, <laughs> shared this in the Facebook group earlier today. Um, 
I want to make sure I have their name right. At Marvelous on TikTok, uh, they made a really they, just amazing content from them, period. Um, but they did a really cool video today that was talking about, you know, separate art from artists with Whedon. And it's like, yeah, but like a whole lot of Whedon as a person is his material. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the same for most creatives. Yeah. And that, that but but like you like you I mean was saying that like the more you watch his shit, the older you get where you're just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, but also said that there is a there's a tone that he is really good at that is just unique to him with that between acts of heroism, here's my normal person life. Yeah, yeah. That like for me it was one of the things I love about Angel, that it's just it's just a bunch of jackasses in LA who happen to also be demon hunters, and one of them is a 200-year-old vampire with a soul. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, that, it's that tone. Same thing with Avengers. It's like, oh, yeah, we're a bunch of buds, but here are two spies, a rage monster, a god, a, a soldier who's been frozen for 100 years, and genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Like, there's, there's something about that specific tone. And they made a comment where they said something to the effect of, we can only hope that the generation of creators inspired by Joss Whedon are able to replicate that tone without any of the baggage of who he is, basically. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like th that tone, I, I don't know if I could say like it, Whedon made it his own. It's very much his own, but he's got that from somewhere. Yeah. He, and like I, I'm firm believer. He got that from, the comics because that is such a stanley way of writing and that is a thing like you know it's called whedonism for a reason right because it's like yeah, oh it's just it. It, exactly and it's become his thing the way the characters talk and you feel that through the first avengers movie it's every single line is a whedonism line and you're like yeah and it kind of makes me look at some of the other things as well and you kind of realize oh that that is a thing they got from somewhere else but yeah it it definitely feels like he got it from somewhere. And like you said, if you go back to Joss Whedon, I mean, he wrote comics. So yeah, it, there is that influence there. He worked on X-Men. That's mm -hmm. there. You can like, it, it's so hard to judge like that, you know, cause it's like, yeah, he made this thing his own and we know it for him. But at the same time, he also got it from somewhere else. So yeah. So it's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate situation, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it's people who are gonna like you know, like grieving, I suppose, to lack of a better word, you know, in their own way. I think it absolutely is grieving. I think that there is yeah. something to be said for like, again, for me, I, I, it's so weird, and I mean, somewhat not not dissimilar to what you were saying with like you were like you know halfway through Borderlands three, I had finally gotten a Hulu subscription for. Two reasons. Finally starting Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. And, Angel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like halfway through season two of Angel. And then the Ray Fisher shit came out. And I had that moment where like that's exact. I was grieving my favorite show ever. Where I was like even eventually like once I'm able to like once I'm able to go okay Joss Whedon's a piece of shit and he created this universe. But David Boreanaz is an amazing actor. Should have played Batman. <laughs> and, you know, like, like process all of that and go, there are too many people who worked on this thing that made me happy to my core that I don't get to, like, ruin what they worked on because this one prick. Mm -hmm. That's a monster. Mm. And eventually I'll be able to watch Angel again without being angry. And I say that like I'm the victim here. Like I'm the one who got screwed over by this piece of shit. Mm, yeah. That. But just, just in that micro of like the fans and how they react. I same thing. So yeah, no, Mitch, I think grieving is absolutely the word. I think it is absolutely the word. I think there are people who are trying to come to terms with the fact that A, they won't ever be able to watch a show again because they're going to be frustrated by it. Or B, they're never going to be able to watch it without that like haze yeah I, I think a lot this might make me this oh, i say might this is absolutely going to make me sound like a real old man a, a lot of it is we live in a world where you have to have an instant reaction and an mm -hmm. instant emotion to things yes everyone had the same 
the, the correct reaction and emotion to this. This is horrible. It's disgusting. It's fucked up. He should you know everything that's coming to him. He deserves. But it's like you don't have to instantly just completely throw away everything they've done. It's like, no, I really like this thing. I really enjoy it. This, you know, this was a thing from my childhood. Give it um, six months or whatever, and, you know, set, when you're further away from that situation right. and the heat of everything, like if you go back and look at it, you like, you might be able to actually enjoy that thing knowing everything. I, it's also one of those things where I hate how the culture has moved now. If something happens with someone, they suddenly might, pull the thing that they're associated with like off of things like there's multiple episodes of always sunny if you're streaming them, if you don't own them you're never seeing those again because same with community same with community mm -hmm. and um there's a uh, you know cases like this plenty of times and i it's one of these things where like even the simpsons they pulled the episode where michael jackson does the voice and yeah, unless yeah. you have a dvd you're never seeing that episode again and it's like I feel like sometimes that's going a little too far. Like if we moved too far in this one direction and I'm just like, ah, like, look what the people did. It is a thing, but then you start messing with so much more. Like, I, I don't know. It feels a little weird to me. Just put mm. a disclaimer or something on it. I say, know? I think out of everything WB have done, the one thing they've done right was that disclaimer in front of Looney Tunes. Yeah. Yep. It does not represent yeah. anything yep. that anyone should be thinking in this modern day and age. Yep. But we cannot bury everything we've done. Mm -hmm. I will say now I'm I'm too new to always sunny to like have an opinion on any episodes that are removed or whatever. I tell you what, some of them are wild and I've only watched oh. them recently. Yeah. <laughs> they are this is like, oh, this is they tippy toe the how the hell yeah. did we keep any new seasons and not be banned yeah. from ever doing anything? Like it's oof. So I had a, I struggled to actually get into that show. I think it took me like seven seasons. <laughs> I, I really like absurdist comedy. So like it took me 0. 0.3 seconds to just, <laughs> and then like, it was, like I, I say that in, it was three episodes in and they're like, Oh, isn't this weird and wacky? And then like, like after the fourth episode, it's like they sold their souls to Satan to get a cigarette. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Um, say, like, everyone I know loves Always Sunny, and they're always told me to watch it. And I watched it, and I'm like, "There's something wrong with me. Like, yeah. There, there yeah, has to I, be something wrong." Community <laughs> instant, instantly fell in love with that show. I could rewatch that till day I die. Always Sunny, I'm just like, "Oh, it's just such a drag." But see, what once I think once I clocked out around like season seven, then I really started to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It, it, yeah, you have to realize that they're tippy toeing that fine line. And I understand why some of the episodes got, you know, taken. It's like the episode is literally called The Gang Gets Racist and They're Not Used to Black People. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I get it. I get it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. And I will, I will say that there is like a certain, like, okay, we've decided this joke isn't funny anymore. Mm -hmm. I think with yeah. comedy shows, like, that's where you really have to be scrutinous with, like, okay, like, let, like, let's look at ourselves. And, you know, like, I mean, you said before, it was like, you know, the way you would describe, you know, oh, I had a crush on Charisma Carpenter today versus how you would have said that sentence as a kid. That I think the same thing where there are certain writers and TV show rooms and writers rooms that will go, yeah, this made me laugh in, you know, 2008. And now I've grown up a little bit and I'm really I just yeah, this doesn't have a place in the conversation. So I get that. The Simpsons stuff with like removing the Michael Jackson episode. I will say that I think that's a good move only because I think something like Simpsons is like so much on its own, like echelon of being in the, in, in, in pop culture that those real world guest star bits. It's almost like hosting SNL. Mm. Where, it's like, where it's like we are celebrating the fact that this person's in the room today so i get cutting michael jackson out of the simpsons because i feel like there, again there's a part of it that like the point of the thing is like michael jackson is in this episode it's the right. michael jackson episode and that i can wrap my head around but i also understand like the impulse to go leave it in but again, put that asterisk yeah. next to the name where mm. it's like, 
Yes, King of Pop, record sales, Grammys, blah, 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 blah. Child molester does not, and none of this makes that any less fucked up. Mm-hmm. And, the, and I think that I think that a lot of people struggle with trying to figure out how to implement that asterisk for themselves. Um, and I'm one of those people. Like I've said a thousand times. So, yeah. so it's, it's interesting that that episode has been brought up because I watched Simpsons for, like a new one for the first time in about a good 10 years the other day. And it had that same character in it. <laughs> and I was like, I thought they got rid of this character completely. So it's like, I can't. I can agree with you, Jared. Like, like, yes, getting rid of it is probably the best bet with something like that sort of situation. But if you're just going to bring that character back with a new voice actor, why not just go back and redub the lines? Yeah, because they did that with Apu, I believe, because Hank Azaria used to do Apu, and then mm. yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, you know. I know that. I did, Mitch, almost the same thing a couple months ago, right? Like, I watched an episode of Simpsons for the first, a new episode for like the first time in a thousand years, right? And it was. The episode was about podcasting, which I was like, okay. <laughs> Literally, I watched that one as well because I still watch The Simpsons, and that was a hilarious episode. Uh, yeah, the true crime one where there's yep. like Grandpa Simpson. I was pissing myself, and there were just so many like, you know, podcasters be like, and I was like, oh my god, this yep. is such. <laughs> they perfectly attacked me and everything I stand for. Wow. <laughs> Like, what do you mean? This is my whole identity now. <laughs> Look, anyway. if, all, if all three of us really want to be a set upset at the Simpsons and fume, go watch their more recent comic book guy episodes because I feel offended watching that. I'm like, stop calling me out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I saw. I, I I just remember seeing that screen grab of like, uh, come complain about the new Star Wars movie before. Yes, or whatever. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I spend too much time around the fandom. <laughs> really, really, really love it. Um, anyway, all of that said, fuck Joss Whedon. Yeah. Stand with yeah. Red Fisher, stand with Charisma Carpenter, and huge shout out to everybody from Buffy and Angel and all the other projects who've uh, come out in support of Charisma Carpenter. Um, the huge chunk of the, ch- of the set or the cast, rather, um, right before we started, David Boreanaz threw his hat in the ring. And I saw that finally, yeah. yep. That's so, good. I yeah. think the, the best thing at the end of the day is take the name off everything. Yeah. Yep. Just straight up, erase the name. You, you've got the edit. You can go in. You can take it out. Done. I want to say Disney did that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because of Jeff Loeb. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it, well, since nobody watched the last season of Agents of Shield, apparently nobody will ever know. So I, I, I watched it the other week because we finally just had the full season, and it was uh, really good. It was really bad. I'm sorry after this. No, I liked there. it. They I should have, it. they should have ended at season five. Oh, and, you're uh, one. You're on that end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's because uh, they 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 never got back to season five height, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> I will die on that hill. <laughs> You know, I I jokingly named this broadcast studio for this episode CBC VTNet Dawn of Fuckery. Uh, I did not realize what was about to happen with CBC Civil War. That this is <laughs> happening. We're this gonna fight over Agents of Shield. <laughs> yeah, the fifth Civil War we've had. It's, it's, it's true. Uh, <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, we're gonna move into Wandavision talk now. All right. So, uh, holy shit. I okay. I have been a hundred percent on the Agnes is Agatha Harkness thing. Yep. Yep. And she has to be. Yep. Agreed. I will say, I will say this episode for a hot minute made me question it. I really for, really? for a hot second I bought it. And then the more I thought of it, I'm like, sure, <laughs> you're you know. I no. she's playing games. I, That's my take on it. Yeah, yeah. And before we get into it properly, actually, I I listened to this your this show a couple of weeks back, just to get ready to know what I'm talking about. And you said about Monica being Quasar. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Ami. <laughs> yeah, <fuck. laughs> I am so glad somebody's called me out on this. <laughs> no, I'm I'm yeah, not. Call- this, this is the thing. I'm not calling you out on it because you okay. said you made that name up entirely. <laughs> I am here to okay, tell you, you did not make that name up. I didn't make it up. No, Which there are several up? iterations of Quasar in Marvel Comics. 
But thought... Monica Rambo had never been one. I thought I made that character nope. up. Because nope. I like, I Googled Marvel Quasar once it find because I listened back to the show because I was I thought there was like an audio hiccup and I wanted to see if I could track it down. Mm. I was like, I was going back there. I'm like, where did I come up with this name? I couldn't even find it. I own a Marvel encyclopedia, didn't even flip through it. I was like, I made this up. I'm an idiot. Because I went, I because at one point I was talking to somebody and I said Polaris and Spectrum. And then it occurred to me, I was like, what the fuck is Quasar? <laughs> like, like it occurred to me I made it up entirely. No, 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 okay, I believe I want to say Janice Vell was a quasar at some point. The um the the son of Marvel. Um there's currently a new quasar, Avril Kinsade, who's joining our Ewan's Guardians of the Galaxy team. There's it's been a few. They have the old quantum bands, they fly around, have the big like glowing cross on their chest, tend to okay. wear red and black. Okay, cool. I I knew that existed too. <laughs> and I, I, heard, I heard it, and I was like, I have to brain. tell him. I, I, I was like, I have to tell him. I can't let I can't let that go. I have to tell him. And it's been eating at me all week. Just like, just don't forget to bring up Quasar. I was so, right. I feel so <laughs> right now. It doesn't change the fact that I went four <laughs> weeks straight up calling her Quasar. That does not vindicate so, me. In that. In, in Monica's defense, she's. Probably one of the few characters that have had near enough ten names in their lifetime, and that's since the eighties. She's changed her name like once every ten years. That is so funny. I was I because when you were like, okay, so you called Monica Quasar, and I'm like, he watched the episode before I corrected myself. And now, <laughs> I get to, now I get to do this Mia Culpa a second time. <laughs> oh, I made that name up. There was, another, like, there was a Star Wars thing that I just imagined into existence before on nights where Mike just looked at me and was like, what are you fucking talking about? I've, I've, done, I've done that so many times. Now, I'm I've convinced that something's happened in like Marvel and then someone goes, that never happened. It's like, no, it did. Then you just scour and eat in there for two hours, and you're like, "My life has been alive for the last five years." I just made right? it completely. Uh, as it. a side note, we will have Armin back momentarily. I believe uh, the 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 storm of the century is starting to kick in and on here. Oh, he's got the snow again. Yeah, oh. it shut him off completely, and yeah. that's he, was <laughs> he messaged me. He was like, "Hey, uh, snow killed me." I told him the same link should work, so he should be back in. Uh, so while he does that. Mitch, thoughts on this week's episode? Well, it's... I am having a real struggle with this show. Not not in a, me not liking it or loving it way, because I think if anyone yeah. follows me on Twitter or has had me talk about the show, I'm in love with this thing. Absolutely, desperately in love with it. But I can't... I, I settle on thinking one thing, and then the next episode, it immediately goes, are you sure? Here's the thing that's going to make you question every, literally everything you think you know. Like, yeah, like the commercials are the best thing. Like, oh, you know, the commercials are clearly just about Wanda's life and her time and everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they, they, they look like they're Infinity Stones. But Agnes, I'm firmly sticking to her being Agatha Harkness. I don't think there's any way that she's not that character. There's too much pointing towards it. I think if anyone's someone that's pretending to be someone else, it's quote pietro uh and, okay uh, i'm i i, I would just want to say it now i am kind of digging P the pietro is mephisto and as like he's oh fun. you're on the mephisto wagon i'm a hundred percent i have i was on mephisto wagon i it actually occurred to me that i like in a passing joke went what if it's mephisto and there's a deal with the devil months before WandaVision and then forgot that I said that because that's another thing I like to do is I've accidentally predicted shit more times than I'm proud of and then forget to do my neener 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 I told you yeah. <laughs> see I, 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 I've done that I did that with Infinity War right there was a, a, one specific poster came out that had Gamora front and center and it was around the time everyone's like oh where's the soul stone how are we going to get into that and I was like she is front and center she's going to die Thanos is going to kill her. That's how he gets it. And that's going to be that. And I'm going to be sad about it. And then it came out. It happened. It went. And I was six months down the line. I was like, I forgot about that tweet. Quickly retweet and gloat about it. But My yeah. all time favorite moment of doing that, that I, 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 it, oh God, there's so many things that I think about. And I'm like, God, I wish I had a podcast when I said this. <laughs> I killed it. 
I'm so good at this. I I I was I was showing a friend of mine Man of Steel like the week before Batman v Superman came out, so that they were like ready for it because we were yeah see. yeah, and we got to a scene where somebody addressed Martha Kent by her name, and I out loud like 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 on my brother and my sister hand up to God right now, the words that left my mouth were, huh. Batman and Superman's moms have the same name. <laughs> Out loud said that one week before. And they were and the person was like, what? I was like, yeah, Martha Kent, Martha Wayne. And then actually said, I wonder if it comes up in the movie. As it, <laughs> actually said it. If I could rewind the hands of time, it would be to be doing this back in 2015. And yeah. give myself a year of time to have that hilarious moment. Like I, I could, I'd have Twitter. I didn't have Twitter. I could. I, I was on the verge of greatness. We were this close. So, so unlike most people that go back in time, put like you know the lot reading numbers down. I like, mean, no. that too. I, I, no, I, I, I want to go back in time for a podcast. I'm going so back in time. <laughs> I am a going to Biff Tan in the shit out of the past. Um, <laughs> do the podcast, win the lottery eight times. Anyway, back to WandaVision. Um, no, yeah. I'm firmly in the Mephisto camp. I also like the idea that the argument that uh, Wanda and Vision have right before the doorbell rings, I like the idea that that is Mephisto realizing shit's about to get out of hand and he needs to get onto the board now. Hmm. And that See, he, he, he has to like, he has to get, he has to involve himself directly at this point hmm. because everything's going to fall apart if he doesn't. I mean, the worst part about this is I a hundred percent agree. Cause the, I don't know if you said as a, as a Funko pop of, Pietro quotes. That's just yeah, yeah, the okay. Halloween, and and it's it's called quotation marks Pietro Maximoff. Like the box has the quotation marks on it, so it's it's clearly not him, right? Now I think everyone yeah. knows it. it's like the worst kept secret. I have said for months. I think even since the show was announced, I'm I'm pretty certain. I think I, I can never pronounce it properly. Cthun, like the the. Big old demon king lord of chaos magic who is trapped in Wonder Gore, who, who was trapped in Wonder Gore Mountain is the big factor behind this, not Mephisto. That's interesting. So like I'm, I'm on a very similar path to everyone else. It's just different characters. Because I'm personally convinced people have same Mephisto because they just know House of M. And of, oh, like, to be fair, it's a perfectly natural conclusion to come to. They're... Tommy and these two twins specifically are from Mephisto. The twins she had in the eighties runs yeah. were master pandemonium. I think it wasn't, they're not going to use that character because why the hell would you? Well, it was like the whole master pandemonium collecting Mephisto's soul. And that was a, he was, was it that? So I, I can't remember that run exactly, but I know it's something he was, I, I only know because I went back and wanted to fact check myself because I am never having another Quasar again. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I went I, I like went back and was like rereading shit and googling stuff it is master pandemonium who is duped by mephisto to collect what master pandemonium thinks are pieces of his own soul but they're actually mephistos okay yeah so that, it's interesting that how you know the old 80s runs did the exact same thing as house of m but people only ever talk about house of m for this show and not those two runs specifically where they're living in a suburban town. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more leaning towards that. And that's kind of been my frame of reference mm. for a lot of this is like the involvement of Agatha and how that kind of maps onto Agnes. I also feel like for its own adaptation, certain like needs having, um, Mephisto having this be like a deal with the devil situation. Yeah, yeah. I'm not entirely sure it is a deal. I I don't know if they'd ever go that route. 
Now, definitely there's a, a third party at play here that's like pushed her into it, whether it's Agatha or Agnes or Custodian yeah. Mephisto, whoever. Like, I think that's definitely a situation that's happened here. The whole, oh, I don't know how any of this started. Like, clearly something has happened there. Absolutely, yeah. Where it's like, I, I've used this term before. Like, she's the director, not the showrunner of this show. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't have full creative control. She can have a little bit of input, but not a lot. So, obviously, the whole kids situation thing, like, where were the kids before? Like, you know, suddenly this episode, we now have a, literally a thousand of them, and half of them aren't even moving properly because they're too far away from her. Which yeah. is just creepy. Um, no, what's, that, what's that life like? I can't imagine just being stationary. I say that I've been doing it for the last year because of pandemic, but. Yeah, look at you being in a country that took it serious. <laughs> Are uh, we taking it seriously? Uh, okay, better. <laughs> but uh, I think one of the other, you know, nasty things with it, with Mephisto's involvement, and like why, why I think that it is a deal with the devil situation, is that my theory from last week, and I don't remember, I don't think last week was the week I did my big Mia culpa with Quasar. I think it was the week before. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm not repeating myself over and over again to you at least. <laughs> I think, I I want to know, I, I do think it's a deal with the devil. I do think it's Mephisto. And I want to know at what point he got on, he got involved with her, Wanda. Yeah, yeah. Because I posited the idea last week that Wanda went rogue and just kind of like blacked out with anger and in bereavement broke in the sword and stole visions parts. And then Mephisto was like, Hey, I can bring him back. I also Travis followed that up with, okay, but what if Mephisto like Mephisto was like, Hey, bring me vision. I can bring him back. And that's why Wanda kicked the door open, the sword, and started firing. Hmm. I'm more inclined to believe what Travis said. I think his makes more sense personally. Yeah. Than just Wanda going, fuck it, and going in guns a blazing for no reason. Um, yeah, because that very much lands her in that tropey, oh, a grieving woman's a villain situation. I don't exactly. think. Exactly. They're, yeah. they're definitely not going that route, despite people being, oh, she's a villain. It's like, no, that, that's the Hayward speak. You don't want to be Hayward. Hayward is a dick. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hayward is wrong. And yeah, yeah. I also saw a lot of conversation about um, people saying that, you know, Wanda in the comics is, is you know, Jewish because Magneto. And it's kind of weird just like offhandedly saying, yes, the Jewish character also worked with the Nazis. Where, like, A, Hayward is, like, being very reductive with the way he's explaining that situation. Um, oh, yeah. He is the, um, he's that directed. stand in for, for, like, how people twist mental health issues in the past, isn't he? It's like, oh, you know, yeah. oh, it's depressed. No, you're just lazy. It's like, no, there's actually uh, an, an imbalance in that person's brain. It's not laziness or anything. Exactly. You know, and then there's one of the other things where, where like, you know, Jimmy Wu even says where he's like, no, no, you're 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 really simplifying what happened there. Yeah. Cause like we know that Wanda and Pietro became insurgents. That insurgency and Hydra aren't the same thing. No, no. They got scooped up by Hydra. We don't know if they were radicalized by Hydra and joined Hydra. Um well, it says Caps is an age of Ultron, isn't it? You know, what sort of monster would yeah. that a German scientist experiment on for the country? It is, they're no different to him. It's just an unfortunate situation they found themselves on a, a bad guy organization. This yeah, surely yeah. Or the only difference there. And um, even in the, the whole context of that, later on, when you know she finally gets inside Ultron's head and just like, eh, you're actually you're gonna try and kill us all. We're not gonna do that. We only wanted this one thing to happen, but no, apart from that. You're no, we're cool, right. exactly. Um, so you, you, so your camp, Cthun, yep, yep. The, there's, there's two, there's too many ties. The, the whole 
this this show is clearly dealing with how she becomes the Scarlet Witch. The Haywood and Jimmy Woo scene gave that away a couple of episodes back, right? And that was what mm-hmm. that was what blew my mind. Where I was like, nobody actually calls her Scarlet no, Witch. They've called her that in marketing and toys, never once in the movies. And you can't blame them; they've only ever given her twenty minutes of screen time in the movies. Exactly. Total. Yeah, I, it just occurred to me she never was actually mm. given the moniker of the Scarlet mm. Witch. Which is why I'm also fundamentally on nothing to do in this show is going to do with mutants. It's all going to be about magic and witches. I agree that this is going to be the more magic side of things. I think that the I think that the ways that people have talked about potentially that becoming this this being the open door for mutants checks out. I can understand why people get to that. I again fundamentally disagree with it. Yeah, I agree. I disagree with the mutant stuff too. I think there's room for it. Or I think there's a way to make it happen. I don't think this is the time and place to do mutants. No, yet. no. Pardon me. I also don't like. I don't like the idea of mutants not existing before Wanda. I want. No, I, I don't I like want that. I know that mutants have been a thing. You know, I mm. I, I don't I don't know how I feel about it. I. I want to be able to like I want I want the Ma- I want the Magneto thing to happen. I want Magneto to be their kid. They're going to be Magneto's kids and I want for it to be an established thing that he always had powers. Yeah. See, I'm very much on the um I have never liked Scarlet Witch and Pietro being having any relation to Magneto whatsoever. Like being on the Brother Mutants fine. Fine, that, that's cool. Being like a paternal thing, have never liked it. I was one of the possibly only people to actually like that retcon in Uncanny Avengers in what 2013, 2014? That sounds right. Mm, where they were like, you know what? Then they're, they're not human, so people can stop panicking about that. They are just they're just experiments. We, we take we're cherry picking bits of the origin that's been retconned in and retconned out, and we're gonna make us a similar but a new one at the same time and we're just going to have them as that that that's where i've always landed with these characters it's just something i i think it's because when i was a kid it never made sense to me it's like why why is she magical and why is he fast when he's got magnet powers and then polaris comes along it's like well why does she have magnet powers like my small brain can never make sense of that and it's like if they do the whole magnet i think fine it's if, if it's fast bender, I'd question why he's only ten years older than her. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'd be a bit weird. But I don't think we're getting any X Men. I think the only no. pe- I think the only people who are going to be carryovers is it's going to be Ryan Reynolds, and that's it. Yeah, one hundred percent. I really don't. You, you, you might get. I say might. You're probably more likely going to get something with Hugh Jackman. I don't know. I really i I don't want to see Hugh Jackman back. It's nothing against him. He's phenomenal as Wolverine. I don't want to see Hugh Jackman back at all. No, I, it's, I want, it's, it's time for someone new with that character. I want I want new across the board, and that includes mm-hmm. Magneto and Michael Fassbender. I don't like saying that, but that's how I need it to be. <laughs> um, I now last in the past couple of weeks, especially last week, learning about the whole disassembled Vision thing. Mm. I was very confident that this was going to be an official reintroduction of the vision. I and think he kind of is. is. I is there a way to get him out of the hex? Like when yes. the hex disappears, yes. when the hex disappears, does vision disintegrate again? Uh, no, because I uh, you. W- w- We've only seen him go out of there once. We don't know if that's just because Wanda subconsciously trying to keep him in or whoever started this whole hexing, which I'm sticking with. It's the Mind Stone is like because then going to play a part. I don't know necessarily how, but I 50 50 of me is split on it. And the other half is the Mind Stone has done something here. And it's the reason why it's still kicked off. I think it's just trying to keep him in it. Not necessarily that he can't survive outside of it. Okay, that 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 makes sense. It's a lot to digest, and it's a very haphazard way of explaining the theory on it. But it's very, it's the one thing that she needed to get him back, and it's the one thing he has. 
because let, let's be honest, it's, it's a quite she is fundamentally tied to that stone as she, he is neither yeah. of them would be anywhere near where they are now if it wasn't for that one stone oh, how yeah. is it back stone, if you will mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's been in every episode no one's really talking about how or why it came back and that to me for this show doesn't seem like a question this is going to leave open-ended or even like not even ask at all so okay so here's another question i want to ask how real was vision corpse in episode what was it four episode four yeah um because I, I me personally i don't think he was he actually looks like that no i i don't think it does like that either i think it's just pure trauma it's a ptsd flashback of actually seeing it i think it was either whoever's controlling this flash that to her to freak her out and remind her keep everything under control because if you don't you lose him yeah or, or yeah. it was just, or it was just sheer ptsd and it's it's again like I'm I I overly mad you know mystify this shit because I'm always assuming there's something powered happening with with, with, with anything in one division because mm -hmm. I you know I, I don't I don't I don't get off guard the whole time um but still had the quasar fuck up F figure that out <laughs> um <laughs> so I I think I don't think he actually looks like that either no, no and it makes even more sense and that's what and i'm i'm even more rooted in the idea that i think somebody showed her vision looking like that um because of pietro in this one scene in this episode where she looks away and comes back and he's swiss cheese like he like uh aaron taylor johnson was in ultron yeah see now i'm i'm firmly on those it's, it's ptsd because a part of me but before I would have said, you know, he, he leaves the hex and he would have reverted back. But then we had the Monica close and the uh, skip broke bungee cord. The beekeeper guy was on stayed the yeah. same. So can't really use that as an excuse. But I, know, I think for a show that's trying to talk about how people approach mental health and the stigma behind it, making flashes like that. A, something someone's done to her might undercut that slightly that makes sense i i know at least for me so far i haven't been trying to like mine the what are we trying to talk about so much as i've been trying to solve the mystery yeah well i and think that, i think those know, two that, are, that, that's like, absolutely valid to just say that it's, it's someone doing it to her and not just her living with the fact that she watched him get his head ripped open mm. but i think what is trying to say and what is happening is mutually exclusive they are the same thing at this point that's interesting i i you have me on that one um i don't know i think it's just like the mirroring of that happening to her and the fact that it isn't actual pietro maximoff that she's mm. seen but he still is like shot up like he was in age of ultron yeah um, yeah that, and the, 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 the key difference is as well which i don't well for me anyway i don't know if i'm just like trying to find something that's not there is vision is how you know he, he's, he was dead right but with pietro bit he had the blood, so it's like he's just happened to him. Obviously, he was he was grey. He had the cataracts on his eyes, so it's to me it didn't make sense for the blood to be there. But I don't know if that was just a you know production design choice, and it's just I eh, just had the blood well, in there. And then and, you know this is me being very tinfoil hatty here. It looked like the bullet wounds were different. I think they were. Because I, I think show, <laughs> they show him getting killed during like the Battle of Sokovia, yeah, right? Yeah. And like, I forget how much he got shot. Oh like, yeah, the, the the dude was half a guy. He was half he a man. Was, he was because it's like it's like because I always remember that like it's practically going like down a diagonal line down his chest, like it's half of an X. Ironically, it's also but the I, lightning yeah. bolt in the original Quicksilver costume. Yeah, or, or, but <laughs> but I also also forget that like his arms are all ripped apart too. Yeah, like, yeah, he, at least one's from the cup. No. 
Yeah. And when they show like the way he falls down, because like, it does like you didn't see that coming, and I'm moving the microphone out of my way a little bit, like his arms just kind of like jut out, and then he falls like that, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he falls in a really strange way. He falls in a weird way, but he falls in such a way that like you can see very clearly on his upper arm, like like the top of like his bicep would be meeting his shoulder. Yeah, with several bullet wounds. And they have the diagonal like boom, 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 boom on on um, Evan Peters' chest. They don't have the arm one. They don't have any of the bullet holes that should be in his arm. And that is so asinine and nitpicky. <laughs> well, this is the this is the problem they create with themselves, isn't it? Like they expect people to find stuff. Like go back to episode two of the Bewitched intro. They hid a Grim Reaper helmet in between the floorboards of the house. And if you watch that scene normally, it's not even on screen. You have someone has to play that episode at like a quarter speed to even catch it. So if you're going to purposely put stuff in there like that, you have to expect people to pick up on bullet hole placement and how many there are. I started that when I saw the Grim Reaper helmet, though, because I saw something in between the floorboards. Like, it's so like, quick, though. It's and I was so like, quick. oh, man, someone will slow that down on Twitter. Uh, when I saw it, but at first I was like, was that Hella's helmet? Just again, when it like zooms past you, yeah, like, oh, it's there. Marvel, Marvel, ha Marvel have a thing for odd shaped helmets. You know, some people thought it's Galactus and it's like, do you want to take another guess at that? Cause you're <laughs> it's clearly not Galactus, but knowing Grim Reaper, such a, a far obscure deep cut of a character. Like you, you can forgive people for it. But. Yeah, I, I yeah, no, that that one's fair. Um, I'm really interested though, because be it Mephisto, be it Cthun, we're both in agreement that whatever Pietro is, that's the person who's responsible for the most part. Yeah, like. But I, 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 I think that puts me off with that with Pietro, though, just to interrupt you again, sorry. Um, you're fine. There's, I think it's episode, when does she walk out of the hex with the drone? Is it three? Or is it four? Four. When she walks out of that, there's a lot of movement at the hex, and they per they make it a point to show you, and you, know, you hear this sword alarm go off. Every time there's movement, you hear and see this alarm go off. And that alarm goes off when Pietro shows up. So the show is literally wanting you to know he's come from the outside in. So he he, he can't, he, we know he's not Aaron Taylor Johnson because we don't know where that body was buried. Too fair, they could have just like flown that body in, but that would be a creepy image to have this dead guy flying across the sky from wherever he's been buried or cremated, however they did it. So and if it was multiverse, you wouldn't like if it let's say it is Peter Maximoff, wouldn't that just come in inside the hex, not from outside of it? Yeah, I do also want to say I think that we I, I and I a lot of the conversations being had right now is saying that like if this is a multiversal thing and this is Wanda beginning to break the multiverse apart, just because they picked the X-Men actor does not necessarily mean this is no. No, and, exactly. Like whenever I was 100%. on podcast, we were talking about how, like, you know, Toby and Andrew may not be playing their specific versions of Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's still very much on the table, and I think that's the case here. That if this ends up being that this is a real Pietro Maximoff, it's not. If it is, it is not the. It's, it's not. Um, you know, sweet no. dream made of no. this. On and gone. No, the the the, the company that never produced an x-men toy in 20 years who purposely tried to bury them in the comics is not all of a sudden going to turn around and go hey this is the that same character from this movie and this franchise that we hate yeah like he really acts a little bit like peter maximoff from the fox movies but i think that's the context of the decades and the sitcoms they're in and it's the context of the decades and it's sitcom I think that's just Evan Peters' charm. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Because they, they clearly act. haven't told him to act like Aaron Taylor Johnson. They, they, he's taking a little bit of what ATJ did, but not a lot. Yeah. But he's very much making it his own. So, 
who do you think the engineer friend of uh, Quasars is? The what? Sorry? The engineer friend. Oh, Blue Marvel, Adam Brashier. What was that? Blue Marvel, Adam Brashier. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's Reed Richards like a lot of people are no, saying. No, 100% not. If Reed was Boy, cast, we would have known. Was. Boy, do I wish it was. Um, but I know it's not. No. no. I, I think people it. need to seriously get that out of their heads because they're going to get disappointed in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> I but, agree. Uh, I think Blue Marvel's mm -hmm. a good thing, though. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good one. I say Blue Marvel is the obvious, at least to me, is the obvious one. Having like at least known him from Al Ewing's Ultimates run, like they've had a relationship, him and Monica, so they're going to know they you know they operate in a very similar circle. Um, if it was Reed Richards, we would have absolutely have known who that cast was. There's no way a trade would have kept that quiet or anyone on Twitter. Um, I also yeah, think I Reed's agree. too big. I think Reed's too big of a name to bring into this show. Just like I think having mutants is too big of a thing to put in the show. It just fundamentally takes away from her. Do I believe this show has helped with the Fantastic Four? Absolutely. I agree. I Yeah. So uh, here's another question I want to ask you and bounce off of you. We already know that like Elizabeth Olsen said the whole thing about, you know, there will be a Luke showing up in Mando level mm -hmm. cameo. Do you think that's what she meant by Evan? That she meant Evan Peters? Or do you still think we're getting another one? And who do you think it is? Right. Well, a lot like this show, context matters with that. Yes. Yeah. She never said the words, we are going to have a Luke Skywalker cameo in the end. That was the question she was asked. And yeah. her answer was yes. Um, so whether she, like, she, Lizzie Olsen, because I'm very familiar with this person, apparently. Um, <laughs> she, she's been in this game for, what, like six, seven years now with these movies. Yeah. She knows what she can and can't say and how to get around it. I, I think she just gave a blank yes. Is it P Evan Peters? I, I, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd assume if anyone's going to show up, it's Dr. Strange. Agreed. I think I do still think we're going to get our stinger from Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, and we know they, there's going to be an after credits because they, I think Jack Schaefer said that, or someone said there's an after credits in this show. Oh, the these end. bastards! They've made the credits the main villain of the whole show, and now they're in gonna, the, you have to please, watch. Please stand by his Mephisto. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Please stand by his Mephisto. I yeah, hope right he now. does it. If Mephisto actually shows up, I hope there's a meta joke where he just kind of you know where he makes a joke. There's got to be. Yes, that's believe. such a Mephisto thing to do in it. Yeah, to just be like, oh, this broadcast has been interrupted. Please stand by and your regularly scheduled programming will resume. If he uh, says it, I'm going to – I will get please stand by tattooed on my face. <laughs> <laughs> just the words or with the whole, like, screen whole as well thing. with the colors? Every, nice. The screen, nice. the coloration, yeah. Nice. That's what we'd like to see. I, I need that in the show proper because <laughs> I'm treating these credits like Daredevil with the whole – the daredevil intro all the locations played a part in this show yeah and i'm convinced these credits are doing the exact same thing because they're very reminiscent of the daredevil netflix credits or intro credits well and i also think that upon once we have all the puzzle pieces assembled i think that there will be added context from the credits you oh know, yeah, yeah, with yeah. E music there is like the sound that a lot of people are saying is a sound of like a woman wailing i haven't heard that one before that's interesting yeah it's like right when they get mm. to the credits it's like a little bit after and again every episode ends with like a big zoom into vision's eyes not every episode sometimes not it's every. wonder sometimes it's vision i think one has been agnes i'm not Sure. Every time I've noticed it, it's been Vision, but maybe I'm wrong. I'll say like, they, I, yeah. I, I, episode six was definitely Wonder's Eyes in the credits. Okay, I'm not sure off the top of my head because I feel like mo I feel like the very least most of them have been Visions, but I think a lot of them have. Yeah, I the the outro credits. There comes a point where like there's like a very ethereal like ah uh, like voice. Yeah. Yeah. That like some people are saying that through 
that it, it it's it sounds ethereal and everything because of all the music and like the the kind of ambient static that's surrounding it for that like mm. inside of a tv vibe that it sounds like it's all masking the sounds of wanda wailing that's really interesting i'm just gonna have to watch it again for the and, 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 and just saying it's making every hair on my body stand <laughs> i love, I love that, that would be a thing. really cool detail if that's actually what's happening there are a few things i enjoy more than a supernatural murder mystery like if you put in any type of situation here's a person they are very traumatized by an ugly situation somebody died and now some weird supernatural shit is happening mm. I do not care what order you put any of those events into. I'm in. Like yeah, that is yeah. like that's sh- that's why Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite Harry Potter movie. Cuz it's this weird caper. And everything's weird and magic and there's time travel and you undid what you did but you never really undid anything cuz you always did the thing. That kind of shit. Hell, that is why and yes, everyone I know Matt and Tim patrons who are in our discord who are going to make fun of me because i brought it up again that's why i <laughs> love five nights at freddy's that's why i love that shit is it's a murder mystery with weird ghosts and haunted shit count me in if it's supernatural and some type of mystery i'm involved immediately yeah. and it's little like weird things like you can hear her screaming into the void and this specific moment in the credits that just like in my arms <laughs> now please yeah oh, for uh, this it's funny you mention like, the whole time travel stuff as well because i'm i'm teetering on the edge of time playing a factor in this the, aside from the whole i'm convinced the hex is a hex because there's six infinity stones and she's remade the mind stone and that's had a lot of to do with this thing but going off of agnes being agatha harkness which there's no way she isn't. There's there's too many bits pointing to her. In the comics, she gives Wonder and Vision when they get married a flower called the Wonder Gore Everbloom. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, that, that's that's the that's the future scene flower, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to. Oh, thank you. We couldn't it's... remember the name of it last. Ah, <laughs> oh, he... right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be consumed twice, once before hunger and once after a death, and it lets you see the future. I'm wondering if they're going to play about with what exactly that flower can do. Because a lot of the things that Agnes has done revolves around plants. And going back to the credits, there is what they want you to believe, at least for me anyway, is a rose. But a common thing in the comics with the Everbloom is... Roses will get dyed different colors to sell to tourists. So it's like if they look just like roses, then we have rose bushes in front of Wanda's house. We have rose oh. bushes at Dottie's house. Um, Agnes has used lavender and azaleas, which are two common witches' ingredients. And funnily enough, Sparky just I don't know if she says Sparky dies because he ate azaleas. She said that he ate too many and I couldn't get to him in time. Yeah. And that he was he was up he was messing around in her bushes ate too many was yeah she, so she addresses that specific like she doesn't say the words he ate my flowers but she yeah. said he was in the bushes and then ate too many then died yeah so it's a question of like there's these plants with the ties to this character and someone has died or something has died could. Yeah agnes be doing something with this plant if it's going to play a factor in at all i purely only get there because of the damn thing in the credits because everything else has played a part you know from episode one we've seen division and scarlet witch headpieces from this episode yeah fantastic i i love the fact that we even if they're ironic because let's be honest a scarlet witch costume was always a bit yeah to begin with <laughs> The fact that we actually have it in here in any form of context is fantastic. With the outfit with the with the little thing on, though, I hope that that becomes an actual fixture of her outfit. What the uh, the wimple? 
As it yeah, is, is that what is that what the little it's, song it's what called? called yeah. Because it comes from uh, a wimple is a thing a nun wears. I think it's something that covers the entire head and the neck. And if you look at uh, like, her, if you look at her old one, it like it covered her neck. It went down past her chin and everything. So I'm pretty certain Marvel call, Marvel call it a wimple. Okay. Even though now it's more definitely a crown, but I I'm begging for that thing to stay. I me too. Yeah, absolutely begging. It's it, even just in this costume now. It you have like even just the jacket she's been wearing the last five years. Just have that, and maybe not that specific crown, but one that looks a bit more in line with the suit. It would look fantastic. I agree. Like it works on screen, even as a joke. Like just just give it to me, like please. So but no, you know, but you're right. Like everything in the credits has come to fruition, and you know, oh, I just got an idea. Okay, so let's say that 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 whale that there that that isn't just like an orchestral, like voice singing whatever. Let's say that actually is Wanda wailing. What if like that's from the moment the deal was made? If there's a deal with Mephisto, oh, I'd love that, it. That would I'd be, love it. and like you go back and you can like compare the two. That'd be neat. Hmm. Because you, um, you, with what this show's done, you could really fuck with people there. Do you remember? I think it was when um, the twins were born, and she sees, or not when she sees Vision, but Vision starts to question things after coming back in from seeing Herb, and there's that glitch and it rewinds a little bit. Yeah. You could use that please stand by screen as that in an episode to make people think it's ended, and then it actually shoots back to the start. If that is the reason they have tactically been making these credits three hours long. Uh, I understand it's an industry thing. People have to have a certain amount of time for their names. For the love of God, can we not have it be a third of the episode, please? <laughs> it does what? my head in every way. that on purpose, though. What <laughs> if, what if the, seriously, the credits aren't that long for The Mandalorian. No, no, but I, I, I think it's got something to do with names. Is sort of the names and the contracts, dude. What if that's a tactical? What if that's what they do? What if they go, okay, episode's over? Mm. And they're like they're counting on people to to bow out. Yeah, because they're not afraid to go meta in this. Like it's it's I a know. TV show being watched by people and they're having the exact same questions we're doing. They're literally watching the same thing we are. So why can't the police stand by screen? If they even if it's not in that way, just use that please stand by screen as the old crap everything's broken thing we now have to rewind you to show you how it happened that would be really neat i like that a lot um any uh final thoughts moving forward into the last three episodes um don't expect them to be an hour long that's oh um, yeah I saw-, <laughs> <laughs> like- I saw that and i was like oh that's cool that's really weird and specific but that's cool mm. And I've been I on that train. About it. I've been on that train for ages, suspecting it to be because, like, in fans, people, there's a lot of things that people like Olsen have said, uh, Bethany said, Feige said. It's like, yeah, the, the last three are going to be the longest ones, but no one specifically said an hour long. And even if it was, it's going to be 14 minutes with 20 minutes of credits. No, <laughs> let's Probably. be honest. Um, yeah, I'm. Um, being real though i kind of don't want this show to end or even be a one-off i i need multiple seasons of this show even if it's not necessarily wanda herself do it with vision because we don't know as far as i'm aware or remember vision's not in doctor strange we uh, don't know that we like like they never said that he is but there's also hasn't been like Mm. a Vision. Which would be weird, right? If he was, because we've announced Scarlet Witch or Wanda Elson to be in this movie. Why not the the, the latter fifty percent of this of this show? Seeing as his name is literally in the title, but wouldn't that be the big stinger though? At the end of the credits, that they all there always is the such and such will return. Is to have that be. Wanda, Scar- the Scarlet Witch and the Vision will return. I hope so. Because that, that's, that's my big thing. By the, like, no matter what happens with these kids, because my thing is I assume the kids are getting flung into the multiverse. 
and that's why she's Doctor Strange. Oh, that's cool. Mm. I, Travis and I have a hundred percent been on the like. She fractures space time with whatever happens, mm. or at least she's party to it. And then Doctor Strange shows up, and you're coming with me to magically super glue mm. reality back together. See, he, he, I would be, I would 100% agree with you if not for what the Ancient One told Bruce in um, Endgame. We don't have stones in the core MCU reality. So, whatever dark timeline we are currently on is happening right now. And what happens if you just suddenly remake a stone, just the one? Or if you pulled a stone from a different reality to put into ours, and we have, in theory, two because they've reduced the atoms, as people like to point out. So what happens then? And, you know, I don't know if it's a reach or not. She, her powers in this, they, they make a point to bring it up. Pietro, quote Pietro says, you know, like it's, you come a long way that like, I'm impressed, blah, 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 blah. Her powers that she's now using that we've never seen her use before match the infinity stones. She re when she's cooking the dinner, she changes the chicken. She burns the chicken. She sends it back to X. She's never been able to meet that time before. Yeah. Or even reality. If you want to take it in that. Exactly. Day. Exactly. Like we know she's, the whole mind stones thing, she's been able to control people's minds, cause illusions and all that, that works out with there. Where does she get these two kids from? It weren't vision. Despite what we didn't want it, it weren't vision. She's had to have pulled souls <laughs> out of somewhere. <laughs> I I forgot to put a <laughs> vision in his monster dog. And <laughs> Thank you for that um so yeah she's put she's got she she's done these got these souls for these kids so okay the Could only the one she hasn't actually used yet is space so could there perhaps be again i'm i'm going to i'm moving forward with my assumption that i do still think this is mephisto mm. And there's like a deal with the devil type thing going on. And it's, I will give you vision back. And I will give you guys your perfect life. But within this perfect life, you are also going to like pump out enough, like magical bullshit radiation, big bang energy to recreate the infinity stones. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Well, now that I say that out loud, Darcy does say that like this kind of radiation is like some big bang type shit. And and when were the stones created? Virgin universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So like, this is this is my this is my um. I'm trying to think how I believe they uh, they think. This is how I tend to try and come up with my little own theories. If you're making a show. And you've only got a limited time. I don't believe it's going to be six hours. I think it's going to be more like four. If you're making a, a show about a character because you've never given them development before and you're going to answer a lot of things, why would you ignore the fact that she's only here because the Infinity Stones? And the fact that and the other half of this show is alive purely because it has an Infinity Stone in his head. Well, let's take that one step further. Like, not only are you only here as in an Avenger with superpowers, you're in this situation because some lunatic came looking for them. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, very... Um, oh, I can't think of the term. It's a very easy place to get to after the last commercial with the shark. Yeah. Well, that's been my thing, is that, like... They kind of established that precedent of all of the commercials are related to trauma. Wanda's trauma, Stark toaster, Strucker watch, Hydra soap, Lagos paper towels, and you hear the blood dripping because you can't wipe it away, blah, blah, blah. I, I just like to say that that was the most offensive thing I've ever seen them do. They did not need to come at me like that with the red liquid. 
<laughs> it's just like, are you joking? <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> I, I love it, please. Yeah, but I, 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 oh, I, the Lagos one I think might be my favorite. Oh, it's my favorite, but it's disgusting. <laughs> it's just it's like, gross. yeah, it's just the just idea that, of like mop up, mop up this puddle of a person. Like, go on. <laughs> yeah, the implication. I, 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 what my favorite is like at the end of the commercial, where you can still hear the dripping. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. that that's that moment where, like I said, like creepy mysteries excite me a lot. And it's the little things that are the, the little decisions that are made in sound design. Like you can hear it dripping and you know, it's mm. an analog for blood that like chill down my spine. I'm going to watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, oh, okay. I, you've officially sold me on the infinity stone mm. stuff because also I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to assume you haven't uh, either listened to, the, I think it was the weekend just gone podcast or yeah, see me talk about it yeah. on Twitter, but the, the commercials are the infinity stones as well. Oh yeah. 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 I, I've been down for the commercials of the stones for a, a little bit. Uh, Cause I like that idea, but I really, really have come to enjoy the idea of the stones being involved boots on the ground like beyond just being a passing reference to some stuff but now i really like the i i i i i like the idea of this being about bringing back the stones and that's the deal it might not be bringing them back that. i suppose like you could say like the a demon mephisto Cthun, whichever allegory for the devil marvel has that you want to use that could easily just be inserted there. Could want the stones. I'm not sure if they are going to actually bring them back this quickly. Or maybe that's a Doctor Strange thing. Because yeah. that, that line from the ancient one is, is too big of an implication to not kind of go like, this is a problem you're going to need to fix eventually. And the solution is these six things. No. They're right there. Go get them or remake them. Maybe we find a giant cosmic space mine and they're just like little bits of gold in the wall who knows yeah but know, that's really interesting and like because they're based around these concepts that okay okay all right god damn it mitch this is brilliant <laughs> okay so the worst part about this is right i i clocked this i think it was over a week ago i want to say it was the saturday before after episode five it just hit me that they're Infinity Stones. So I tweet about it. Next thing I know, Kevin Smith's doing his podcast. Mark Bernardin. Oh, I, someone I know thinks they're Infinity Stones. I'm like, God damn it. And then I'm, three yeah, hours I'm, after that, comic book's like, we think they're the Infinity Stones. I'm like, can people not? <laughs> Let me have my theory. No. So the, sh the, the, the sitcom eras keep skipping time periods. Mm -hmm. And it's warping reality. We have created two souls out of nothing. Obviously, the connection to the Mind Stone speaks for itself. I mean, just messaged me. I wanted to talk about WandaVision so bad. Lol, I'm so sorry. You're missing one. <laughs> um, so, right, you got three weeks left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I'm bringing you. <laughs> uh, so we bring the souls out of nothing. We obviously have the ties to the mind stone. She's also manipulating everybody's minds. The hex like force field is taking is like an occupancy of space. What if there has to be this like with like some weird bullshit magic or whatever that the distillation of the concept of space, time, mind, reality, soul all need to like happen in some way with like the magic behind it to forge boom new time stone because i we we found a way to manipulate time like we like we did time shit and therefore with enough magic juice created a new time stone i will tell you right now that is not too dissimilar to how the ultimates did infinity stones and i absolutely love the hell out of the idea 
in, in the elements, I don't know if you know, the stones came uh, from you're into the ultimate universe. So I'm, I'm yeah, glad. yeah, sorry, yeah, the, the 1610 Marvel Universe. The, the, the stones in that were created by like horrific trauma in the universe that caused the scar, and they could just appear in like certain points. Like, I think the mind stone in that universe was mistaken for a tumor in Tony Stark's head, so you can do. And I've been begging for stuff like that in the MCU for ages. And if this is the way we get the stones back, like, oh, she's done this much of reality. Oh, I've made a reality stone. That would really explain why they kind of put her in this weird magical pressure cooker. Hmm. I don't know I, I know people don't like the idea of the Infinity Stones being a big thing for this straight away, but I think they're too big of a MacGuffin not to just to shelve. I think it's a good explanation, you know. And again, like we've taken Thanos off the board, so we don't have to worry mm. about like the impending doom of Thanos and like having our eyes on the, on the 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 Infinity Stones at all times. However, I think that is a good excuse to bring in one of these all-powerful beings to try to reforge all the Infinity Stones. And again, maybe Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is going, we should not have these on hand. Yeah, yeah. We're going like, we should not have these in the same room as us, or at least knowing we can have them on hand again. And the adventure is hiding them. Yeah, yeah. Well, because he, here's another thing why I'm, I'm, I'm certain it's the Infinity Stones are playing a part in somewhere. It, the whole of Phase 4 is very much like, a, right, we've done our big bombastic thing. We're now going to double down on asking what happens next. Like, you know, this, this person's had trauma and never had the time to deal with it for six years. She's just come back. She watched her husband die twice. What what does that look like? It's like, oh, this guy's been asked to take up like the biggest responsibility of leading everyone with this shield as a symbol. And he's going to have to learn the history of this shield and everything. Like, what does that look like? And a lot of it seems to be like that. So, yeah. I guess it's going back to asking, like, why ignore the Infinity Stones there? The Marvel doesn't like, at least Feige doesn't seem like the type of person to ever take an idea off the table. So why would you ever take the Illuminati off the table? I agree. And it's like, well, we have Carol. She's tied to a stone. We have Wanda. She's tied to a stone. Admittedly, she's tied to the same stone as Vision. Doctor Strange is tied to a stone. You can tie two more people to a stone somehow, and you've got an Illuminati. Like, you could that be like, the result of this show? That would be interesting. I've said before I want to see the Illuminati, and I don't know how you... I mean, granted, like there's been so many different versions. Like You don't necessarily need to have Tony in the room for it. Um, it, would no. be, it would be nice for him to be in the room for it. You know, In the same way, I think Kevin Feige was the one like, man, isn't it a shame that Reed Richards and Tony Stark will never meet? And it's like, Kevin, you don't get to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but here's another question. Who says they won't? Also true. Uh, but yeah, they, damn, this has been good. I am, I'm a hundred percent on board. This is what's happening with the stones. I'm in, I'm in, let's go, let's go. It's, I, I'm so thankful that a, you actually let me come on here. Cause I've been, what mean I, I enjoy how mean I mean do it with the commentaries for each episode, but it's never enough. Uh, I haven't had an outlet to actually without spamming the hell out of my followers on Twitter, the poor selves, like never had that out to actually talk about it as much as we have. So thank you. I love episode. <laughs> it is my favorite. I love when there's a show going because we can do this. And thank God it's weekly. A hundred percent agree. No, anybody who is complaining about the weekly format, you're an idiot. And I don't take your opinion. Uh, agree. <laughs> like, I will not take you seriously. If you want this show, indie wire, you are dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> that article, like, we have not recently just discovered a new format with this show. It has been around for 100 years now. It's called like, television. It is called television. That's half the reason why this show is called what it is. It's a play on words. Because like everything else, there's several layers deep to it. Yeah. Several yeah. Layers. I remember, like, I was like, we were like two hours away from the show dropping. 
Um, that was on the film with Alexis. I was like, you know, it just occurred to me. It's WandaVision, like television. And she was like, what? It's just- <laughs> I was like, yeah. She was like, you've known about this show for how many years now? I was like, at least one and a half. You just figured out it's a play on the word television. I'm like, his name is Vision. You just figured out that this show is meant to be a play on the word television. He's like, you so, know what the show's about, right? I'm like, yeah, it's going to be like the old timey sitcoms. How did you not know it was television, Jared? So, so let me ask you this: Did what was what did you just think it was before that? It was called One Division because it was Wonder and Vision. Uh huh. Right. Quasar. I, I, yeah, don't forget. No, I, I was, was going to say I don't know if it's going to blow your mind or not, but um, it's also her full name now. <laughs> she's no longer Wonder Maximal. She's Wonder Vision. Okay, I feel the need to just say to like validate myself and anybody <laughs> who like made their way over here because of the CBC people. If you go back and listen to when we were talking about season two with the boys, I called the entire season halfway through. Like, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I am not a moron. I, I oh, God damn it. Oh, uh, that's good. That's so clever. It's her full name. I never even thought of that. That never crossed my mm. mind until a minute ago. Damn. No, that, that, that's just the, sh- that, the title of this show is the whole entire show in a nutshell. You're absolutely right. Like, there's at least three different ways you can look at everything. People always go about commercials like, no, look, just look at the title. All right, just look at that. Also, why is the dot on the eye buzzy? Is it because it's a TV antenna? Could it be an Infinity Stone? Could it be her powers? Who knows? I didn't notice it was buzzy until I was yeah. made fun of for not noticing. <laughs> and then I saw the buzzy eye and I was like, oh, son of a bitch. It was right there. I was like, also, the buzzy what? eye could be um, the wimple, the crown. The wimple. Mm-hmm. With that, Mitch, where can the lovely people find you and everything you do on the interwebs? Uh, you can find me on YouTube over at Comfortcast on the CBC uh, live me and sean will be bringing back some form of show at some point we have an idea it's just taking us a while to figure out a lot of personal stuff going on in one of at least one of our lives not mine um it stopped us from doing it so you can find us over there and hopefully soon and also you can follow me on twitter at mitch 692 absolutely they can and they should and I will say this, Armin isn't here for the obligatory ass kissing session that has to happen <laughs> anytime we collaborate, but I'm going to say it because I say it every time. Comic Book Cast was the very first podcast I ever got into um, and became a huge Was fan. that before or after me? It was before you. Yeah, so you've been around for that long. I, I was around long enough for the first time I collaborated with Armin. The first words out of my mouth were, I don't mean to sound like an ass, but what happened to blood sweat comics? That's oh, wow. <laughs> and, That's, yeah. a pull. That's a pull. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. like, that, the first words out of my mouth when I had him in a discord chat was like, Hey, I don't mean to be that guy, but a Jared from about two and a half years ago would punch me in the throat if I didn't ask. <laughs> Um, so and then everyone I mean, got stuck with me and Tristan. Hey, that is not true at all. We are all blessed to have you. Um, I am always honored to work with you guys. Like I said, I am a huge fan. Um, I have always said that uh, it, when I use the term amateur, I mean as opposed to a big trade. I have always said that amateur entertainment coverage done right is what the comic book cast looks like. Oh, thanks. There is I, not I appreciate that. I do. It is not clickbait. It is not it is not fandom menace hate bait. It is news and damn funny commentary on top of that. Uh I I, I have I make no bones about the fact that I have that the, the DNA of CBC has made its way over to the Nerd Academy because 
that's kind of where I got the vision of, oh, yeah, this is how you're supposed to run this kind of thing. You mean so, you got the one oh, division? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> it is where uh, I got a lot of inspiration to do what we do. And uh, without Armin and company, and Mitch is very much a part of that, you probably don't have this show, so that probably means you would have two hours of your life back today. So I apologize either direction. So do not apologize. As I've said, I've needed an outlet and someone to talk to about this show. I'm kind of happy Armin had his internet die because that means I, I actually got to talk more and not had to stop every five minutes. But we won't tell him that. War, CBC Civil War, right? Now. <laughs> I will slowly take over, and then yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been the goal i'm in the long play it's been so i think it's the sixth year now that sounds right there's someone who's been watching that sounds about right i say i want to say i started i think my first video with armin was with joel doing an agents of shield spoiler cast for that season and then i did ant-man with them as well so it's got to be 2015 2016 so five six years yeah well it's been a while and i'm old <laughs> it's okay i've had i've had like social media memories pop up where like i've only been doing the whole podcast thing for like two and a half years now um going on three this is the first oh hold on i need to do basic math here Wait. <laughs> i started i got brought in to do back discussion in what at the end of the no summer of 2018 and then we started nerd academy at the beginning of 2020 and now we're here so nice, uh, nice. yeah i've been doing it long enough that i've gotten like weird facebook memories of like really old content that i'm like oh wow i never would have done that <laughs> yeah. I hate, uh, that that's a different conversation you, that, you oh see like God. 10 year old face of post and you're like oh who is this person? That I'm me. so glad I didn't have like real social media long enough to have that kind of thing. Yes. I'm just able to go back and look at content and like nitpick myself aggressively. But that's one thing I've never done, mainly because A, I'm too afraid to do it. B, I hate the sound of my own voice. <laughs> C, I think if I did it, I'd never say a damn thing again. I have to enjoy an episode enough to be able to listen back to it. Like, the only shows of my own that I've like really gone back and listened to was like, again, back when we were still with do back discussion. Um, I had like a very big episode all about Raylo with girls with sabers. Mm. Um, and like, I was just, I was just proud of myself that I was able to keep up with girls with sabers um, on that one. Stuff like that. Um, another star Wars podcast, the bomb bad cast. I go back and re-listen to all of those just because I love Jerry and Scotty. Um, and uh, uh, I, 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 I will not disclose just how giggly and giddy I was listening back to my own guest spot on Comic Book Cast. <laughs> um, that was fun. That was fun. It was a blast. Was I remember that whole day. I was like, I woke up. I, that, I, there are very few days where I wake up with urgency. Yeah. But I woke up. I woke up like went down and got my coffee. I was like, I am on motherfucking comic book. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. I'm doing it. This is weird. This is kind of weird and full circle, and I love it. But I'm a comic book cast today. It's phenomenal. So right? you got I you got a lot of full circle stuff. It's always oh, nice. Oh my god! Right, right. I remember. I, I remember. This is this is a quadruple the length of this show. I keep this little story quick. I remember <laughs> the really weird. This is back when Armin was like actually on Twitter. I remember like the weird moment I had when Armin followed me back. And I was like, I had only been with Dubak for a few months. And I like I immediately went, I will punch a baby to have him on my podcast. <laughs> I like I would immediately, I was like, I have one <laughs> objective, and it's him being a guest. <laughs> and I was like, and I, I was I was just rabid, like eyes blacked out. Like I, I had texted the guy who ran who runs Dubak. I was like, I don't know, no, no, no. I have the perfect guy, I have the perfect guest for Dubak. And he's like, who who? Uh, I, I gave him the whole background. He's like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. And I'm like, you don't understand the group. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I would not be like working with you if I was not aware of this kind of thing. <laughs> like, this goes back. Like, it was, it, it, it's phenomenal. And working with you guys just makes me giddy every time. So, 
All right. I managed to make the ass kissing section 10 minutes long. (laughs) Validate me, George, Jared, please validate me. Listen, I, I, I think I said this on bomb bad cast as I was on their show on Thursday. There is something weird about being in the perfect, like age range and type of fan that I've had long enough to become fans of a lot of people who are contemporaries now. Yeah, I, that's the magic of the internet, though, isn't it? No. I've never been cool about it. I've <laughs> never been cool about it. Like, I just say it. It was like with you guys and Steel Saunders from Steel Wars. Every day I'm like, I'm just a really big fan of you guys. This is really cool. <laughs> like, I have like zero chill, zero like charm about it. I was like, it's just neat to work with you. <laughs> yeah i can't i can't not be a dope about it and i know the other option is just to like play it cool and pretend i'm not freaking out on the inside and i'm like i'm not gonna do that that's not who i am to just pretend that i'm not happy. <laughs> like, oh my god i mean it rich oh my god steel Saunders. uh at this point the next big one is to work with star wars explained and then mr sunday movies like those are the next two that i'm like i'm like like come to hell or high water i'm gonna do it ah you'll get him Yo, I, oh yeah, yeah. The, the, Yo, those, those are, like again, they're all part of my like podcast host Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> um, what would that look like? That, no, that's gonna drag us on too long. I, to say, I think that I think that's different for everybody. Mine is going to just embarrassingly be made up of people <laughs> that already had on. Um, and I have to come clean for the amount of times I squeal getting into a Discord call. But anyway. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DarkJedi2552, bragging about having comic book cast on my podcast again. <laughs> and you can find the Nerd Academy on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus, Case and Breon, The Waffle Wizard, Delta 9, and Zach Canals. You guys help us produce the content that we love to make. Be sure to also check out the $5 tier where you get access to our patron-exclusive shows, uh, including our Knights of the Nerd Republic Versus series. February was Barris Ophi versus Ray, and uh, March is going to be Kyle Katarn versus Darth Malgus. Heroic History 101, we're going to be talking Sam Wilson, Captain America, to tie in with both Black History Month and with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And on the $5 tier, you also get access to the Nerd Academy Movie Club audio commentaries. February, again, for Black History Month, is all Ryan Coogler movies. We have Fruitvale Station up there. We're going to have our Black Panther one, or our Creed one up soon. And then we're going to be doing Black Panther at the end of the month. And March, to coincide with a little ditty coming out on March 18th, we're doing the Zack Snyder DC movies. So... Travis might be drunk again. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> God knows he'll need it. And I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. And if you would like to support the Third Academy even further, you can check out our Tee Public. It's linked on our website on the Student Store tab. Go ahead and click on that and get all manner of Nerd Academy goodies. With that, thank you so much for listening. Thank you again to Armin and Mitch for joining us. And class dismissed. <laughs>